The first thing I would do if I was in charge of the world, besides remove speed bumps and school zones, uh, <laughs> would be um, eliminate all income taxes. Jeff Canada. Is that a stage name? No. Is that your real name? It's my real name. That's a fantastic name. Well, it was not fantastic in basic training. Look at those things. You think? pull that off. You want to make out? You <laughs> go, no, not, not anymore. You know what would be perfect is like an EMP blast <laughs> that just shuts down the grid for like five years. It would do it. Because you would have 20% of the twenty percent of the population kill themselves in the first week because social media doesn't work. The Republican Party was the, the party of uh, personal freedom, mm -hmm. and they're not that anymore. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's, it's a crazy world we live in right well, now. Well, what man. you said earlier is a, is, a, is a very true statement. It, when the COVID thing hit and they shut down everything, you realize we're, we're not a free country. Yo, 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 what's up? It, welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. I almost forgot the name of the show, which is impossible to do. After eight years of calling this thing by my own name, I almost forgot the name of the show. I don't know whose show I thought I was about to be hosting, but anyway. Hey, uh, what's up? Listen, guys, I want you to do something for me. I need you to do something for me. I want you to participate in my weekly newsletter. We're going to send you out some information. We're going to send you some clips. We're going to send you some stuff that you're not going to get on the show. You do that by going to the thechadprathershow.com, dropping your email address in there, joining the newsletter, and then be sure to check your inbox every week. We'll send it out on Fridays to make sure that you're up to date on all the stuff that's going on. And not only that, there'll be some fun stuff in there as well. So... Check it out, thechadprathershow.com. Drop your email address. Be part of the family. Be part of the posse, whatever you want to call it, and uh, join the club. You can be a dork like me and, and wear these sunglasses. I'm just The future is so bright. The future is so bright. Uh, there's a picture that's floating around out there. Uh, it's on the internet. I've seen it. Uh, I love it. It's, it's the only picture I'm aware of of me kissing another grown man. And, uh, and yes, I'm kissing him. He's kissing me. You can tell that I was surprised by the kiss. Uh, there's, here's the picture right here. You could take a look at it. Uh, but, um, I was kissing him back and I, and I, I'm not going to say I didn't like it. The man in question that, uh, that sexually harassed me that I enjoyed is a fellow by the name of Jeff Canada. And he's joining me on the show right now. <laughs> What's up, buddy? That was a uh, fun night. How many years ago was that? Uh, 2021. Yeah, because that was COVID-ish, wasn't it? Yeah, 20, maybe 2020, 2020, 2021. It was the probably third show I did with you. And that was over. That was over on Lake, on on Lake Conroe, right? Yeah, In Walden. Yeah. God, that's one of those things. Like I, I, you know, that was before. I got to take those glasses off. I feel like a dork. My buddy Josh Terry. I was telling the Josh Terry podcast. He was wearing these glasses. I was like, I want to see if I can wear dorky glasses. Josh makes them look cool. Um, I can't do it. I feel like I'm going to the, the the skeet range or something like that with these orange lenses on. It looks good looking through there. It's like amber visions. You remember those from back in the day? Yeah. Amber what, visions. Blue blockers? Yeah. <laughs> blue blockers. I think they look all right. <laughs> yeah, they look good on you. Look at those things. You think? pull that off. You want to make out? You <laughs> go, no, not, <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. You know what's funny about that night is, uh, is the night before I got – Really sloshed. Yeah. And then so we ordered up the uh, IV people right. for that night. And they were giving us the IVs. And we were, or I was, I don't know about you, but I was. I got in, one. I But while they were giving us the IVs, I was drinking beer, like <laughs> like Miller Lite and Jameson. So, so Jeff, before we get too deep into, into some backstories there, Jeff's a singer-songwriter. He's, he's here in the, the greater Houston area, uh, travels all over the place, playing music, incredibly gifted, one of my buddies. And, uh, and I want to talk a little bit about what he does, and, and I want to tell you a little while why I want to talk about that, because I think it's significant to all of us to kind of watch each, other, each other's stories and journeys. And, and it's just not only fun and entertaining to hear those stories, but it's also good because you're on a journey too, and and we're all kind of dealing with the same struggles, even though we do different things in life. That night, uh, I do remember getting the IV. I also remember getting pretty pretty inebriated myself at that show. So that was me, Steve, and I guess Ben, and doing a ragamuffin thing. Was Cooper Wade there that night? No, no, he wasn't. Oh, there maybe that. he was. I don't. I don't know. I want to think he was. Almost ben thinking. wasn't there. Ben I was think it was, so Cooper. it was Cooper. Man, I don't remember. I don't remember. I got we got pretty inebriated that night. That was but I was still yeah. living in Fort Worth at the time. You came and you you opened the show for us, which I, I always love it when you do that because you're so freaking talented and it's just fun to watch really really talented people do their thing. And uh, yeah, you you came up behind me and you, you I mean not a kiss on the cheek either. It was full on. Yeah. It was full on, and I just went with it. Yeah. 
I just took it. I'm yeah. not. I'm not homophobic. You didn't have a choice. I'm not. <laughs> I kind of got coerced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no after pictures of a punch, so I'm. No. I feel. I feel pretty good. about it. I just it. went with it. And you and I actually forgot that picture existed. It's a funny picture. Um, uh, but uh, when you sent it to me again, not uh, too awfully long ago, I was like, I love this. That's you said great. I'm just it's saving a, it for a good time. Well, my my thing is 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 I get to hang out with a lot of you guys off. Yeah, stage and off camera, backstage or whatever. And there's a lot of debauchery that goes on. Not I'm mean, just with all my friends. And I have videos and pictures <laughs> of so many people doing shit that I can never release. You're like P Diddy, you know, minus the diddling, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely minus the diddling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but with you, it's different because you're you're already out there. Like you're, yeah. I mean, you're just you'll you know you don't have a filter. You're insane. You'll do whatever. Yeah. And so it kind of fits, but like. You know, I have I have a video of Brie Bagwell saying Jeff Canada sucks dot com, but then afterwards she says some like explicitives on it, and I can't I can't put that out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, so. and it's a shame because people are held to a different kind of standard. I guess if you're in the public eye, they expect you to be some certain thing. Um, well, you all, you I will say this: I think the general majority of people don't expect anything special of you, I, but you got that little fringe group that are looking to see you fall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you can't, with cancel culture out there, it's like, ah, should I put this out? This is just us being real people having a good time. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I've, I'm talking about Bree Bagwell. Bree Bagwell traveled around the country with me for a while doing stuff, and we had a blast yeah, on the road. Yeah, she's great. You know, I mean, she's one of the guys. Yeah, and, she's and, definitely one of the dudes. And yet she kind of gets held to a different standard I've seen because she's a woman, like yeah. with certain sponsors she's had. Um, our friend Cindy that that runs all of my merch stuff right now, she's got the glam wagon. Uh, and she was she had one of her original names, she had Dixie in the name of her boutique or clothing boutique and was sponsoring Brie Bagwell. Brie Bagwell at the time, her label, I think it was Sony, was ready to drop her because they had Dixie in the name of one of her sponsors. And that was when all the whatever George Floyd crap was going on mm. and, and all that nonsense. But I think I think we're finally at a position right now, as we do with everything in America, as we overcorrect everything. And so, you know, with the Me Too movement and all the George Floyd and all that shit, we went way left yeah. and cancel culture and all the virtue signaling and all that stuff. But I think now you're actually seeing a lot of fight back with that. And people just don't care. People have just had enough. Yeah, you're done. I mean, Rogan just says what he wants to say. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not anywhere even close to those numbers. But, you know, I'm not I'm not going to tamper down who I am because of your sensibility. For 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been America's only Christian wireless service provider. When I say the only ones, they are the only ones. And I'm so proud of them as my friends and partners for this show. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage. And they're going to give you the ability to access all three major your network. So if you're used to a certain coverage, you can keep that same coverage, but you can also use Patriot Mobile and not fund all of these big companies that send a portion of your bill to leftist causes. So if you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending a message that you support free speech, religious freedom, the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment, our military veterans, first responder heroes, 100% US-based customer service team make switching easy. They will even give you free activation when you use promo code CHAD. Uh, you can keep your phone. You can keep your number. You can upgrade. They'll help you do that. But they will find the best plan for your family and for your needs. Uh, go to patriotmobile.com slash chad or call them 972 patriot 972 patriot or give them a call or check them out online i should say patriotmobile.com slash chad join me and make the switch today i'm done with and that. you've got a podcast you you you're pretty filterless yourself yeah and uh, what's the name of your podcast the jeff Canada that's show. see i'm telling you dude that's what i thought it was and I, I i'm always people just should just name their podcast with their name yeah. Just to name it after your name. Well, we're trying, Candace and I are going to start one. And, uh, that's your girlfriend. Yeah. And we're going to do like thing. opposites attract or something like that. We got to figure out some, we're just doing like a 30 minute one once a week or something. So shit. I got to ask you, cause I'm in the same boat. She's hot. How'd you pick that up? Uh, guitar, bro. The just, guitar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I made a very conscious decision at about 15 or 16 <laughs> that if I was to learn how to play guitar, I would never have to go to the gym. Yeah. Ever. Dude, that's true. Have you seen some of these dudes around? I mean, like our buddies, like Rio Trippiano. <laughs> Rio. Rio. And I mean, these dudes, I mean, 
I'm like, oh, dude, they, they, they have no problem. No. You know? Well, I think it's a confidence thing more than it yeah. is an attractive thing. I think, I think women want a dude that is not scared, you know, that's comfortable in his own skin. Regardless yeah, that's of, a good point. Regard, and, and when you play guitar and you sing for a living, you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Yeah, you're willing to expose yourself. Have you seen that meme? It's an old one. I wish I, I need to find it again where it shows the dorky guy leaning against the car. He's all by himself. And then it shows him leaning against the car with a guitar. And then there's a hot girl beside yeah. him. I have yeah. not seen that one. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's an age old <clears throat> an age old thing. I mean, yeah. if I think that's kind of going out the window now, because I don't think society even pays attention to us anymore. What do you think? Why not? I don't know. Well, I, I have a bunch of different uh, views on it. I think COVID, COVID was a big problem because a lot of people started working from home and they mm -hmm. never went back to work. And so they're on, you know, they're texting all day and they're working from home. They don't get any social uh, time. So whenever they do go out to a bar or a restaurant or a live music venue or whatever, that's the only social time they have. So they're mm -hmm. going to talk to their friends. They don't give a crap what's going on. They don't on care stage. about what's on stage. I think that's part of it. I also think that every single time you log on to social media any of those you see somebody playing music and yeah. singing and anytime you go to any bar or restaurant you see somebody playing and singing i just don't think society thinks it's special anymore it's a good point i because i because i've noticed that even with my shows which are a little more controlled environment if you're doing comedy even with my shows the the audience members, they're pretty brazen about picking up their phone and videoing it with their flash on when they've been told, don't do that. I, like, I don't care if you video my show or take pictures at my show. A lot of comedians, that's a no-no. I don't have a problem with that. Um, just turn your flash off. Yeah, and or people in the back are talking. Yeah, and don't block other people's views. Yeah, and they do that. And it's like, eh, just take it for granted because they're so used to seeing everything live through a screen that where they're at even in that moment is not real or... I don't know. The economy's hurting people. I know that there's a lot of venues that are closing down around out there because people just don't go out anymore. But a lot of that's on the venue too. A and lot I, of and it. every time a I see of one it. of these these posts that, that talk about a venue shutting down, and then I'll go back and look at that venue, and you know they did a. I'm sorry, venues, but if you're listening to this, but putting your daily special on Facebook is not going to get people <laughs> to come into your bar. <laughs> We got chicken fried for twelve ninety nine. Right. You're right. You know, so you I play a lot of places still that that you'll have they'll go in and they'll they'll put their their daily special and won't mention music at all. Yeah. And then so when people get there, they think it, you know, they expect to be a restaurant and that's what it is. And those I understand it. I understand when people go to like the rustic and they don't pay attention to what's going on. But what I don't understand is when people come pay twenty, twenty five bucks a ticket to come see you play and they still don't care what's going on. Right. Like Dosi -si Do, for example, you know. You, yeah. you were there that night. Yeah. I, that, so one of the funniest stories, I'm going to tell that story. I'm going to tell that story because you were recording a live album at one of our favorite venues, uh, Spring, Texas, do, -Si do the big barn, which is everybody who's anybody's played that thing. It's a beautiful listening room. It's an old barn that Stephen Saeed brought down here, rebuilt, and, and reconfigured the thing. Um, it's a cool spot. Seats 400-something people. Uh, got an incredible dinner in there. You know, when I do a show in there, they always include the dinner. It's a hundred people. God, it's a hundred twenty-five dollar ticket. What in the hell? You think you're special now or something like that? I'm like, well, you're getting a whole lot for that. But yeah, um, it, people have started to understand it. But you were doing your live album in there, and you kick off. And I was we CJ and I came to that. That was like June or July two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, twenty twenty-two. Yeah, and so you're in there, got the stand-up bass going, the band's playing. <laughs> And these people over in the corner just won't shut up. And, I mean, that's a general rule, rule in a listening room. Shut up. No yeah. matter what, just shut up. Listen. Uh, it's not a bar. Listen. And so these people are talking, and Jeff goes, um, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> You're like, we pay a lot of money to do this. Yeah. This is a major production. Yeah. We work really hard. We've practiced a whole lot. We're trying to record this thing. Could y'all please shut the fuck up? Dude, it was just, well, it's the same lady whose phone rang the song before when I was setting up my mom's song. Yeah. I was setting up the song that, like, is one of the hardest songs for me to play live. And I'm setting up the song, and her phone rings. And I'm like, man. And I left all that on the record. And I was like, yeah. I was like, man, it's hard not to be an asshole. And I even asked on the record, I said, hey, Chad, isn't it hard not to be an asshole? And you can hear you say something. And, uh, you know, and, and they, they were warned so many times. Like our, our entire intro, we came out like to the new Top Gun theme. And, yeah. and like I brought everybody down. I was like, gave them all warnings and told everybody, you know, we're recording a live record. We need your help. 
And these four ladies just did not care at all. But what's crazy is after I told them that, they didn't say a word. No, they and they didn't beat. leave. They did block me on social media, but they didn't leave. They hung out. Uh, Charlie Diggs came in and, and came to you afterwards. He goes, I've never seen it this quiet in here. And you said something along this because yeah. Jeff just chewed their ass. <laughs> Jeff just chewed everybody's. I, so, I would have never done that in a, in, a, in a normal bar environment. You're recording an album for right. crying out loud. And it, and it was, and it was, you know, and we, and we, whatever. I, I came up to you at your merch table afterwards. Peyton Howie opened for you mm -hmm. that night. She's incredibly talented too. Beast. Um, and young girl, 20, what, 21, 22 years old, just phenomenal. Just a beast. And um, <laughs> I walked up to you and I said, dude, you got to leave that part in the album. And yeah. you're like, I will. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, because people should see what, what you go through. We talk a lot about COVID and vaccines, long COVID, long vax, dying suddenly. I mean, a lot of buzzwords are out there. Well, you like it or not, between the virus, vaxes, shedding, jabbed or not, most of us, you got toxins inside of your body, man. And uh, it means it's like a ticking time bomb just waiting to blow. Uh, we've got all kind of poisons inside of us. So the simple solution to help you and your family is with a company that I know as Warrior Essentials, and I love them. Their patent-pending formula has evolved into the most powerful way to help your body heal itself, turning your God-given defenses for a strong and healthy body uh, just into overdrive, and it's a fantastic thing. Warrior Essentials, it's not a drug. It uses targeted nutrition to work with the body's natural defenses. It removes toxins, and it repairs circulatory health. It's it's going to restore your body back to its ability to heal itself. So today we're able to share a special offer with you guys. Go to recoverwithchad.com. Save up to 50% off regular prices plus free shipping. Help get rid of the toxic spike proteins. Boost your health. We can't save our country if, you, if you've fallen over dead. So recoverwithchad.com. That's recoverwithchad.com for up to 50% off and free shipping. These statements have not been evaluated by, the, evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Everybody thinks, you, you, like you said earlier, it's a guitar, right? Everything falls in your lap. Pretty girls, all the money, all the attention. It's just it's all because you learned how to play a guitar. Um, isn't that all you really need in this world? But there's a lot more to it than that. When you set out, I'm going to ask you a question here. You may not want to answer. I don't know. Uh, Jeff Canada. Is that a stage name? No. Is that your real name? That's my real name. That's a fantastic name. Well, it was not fantastic in basic training. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't last very long. Really? And I broke my leg. But uh yeah, I got I got smoked quite often you got in my first over couple it? couple weeks in there. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, last name Canada in the yeah. US Army. In the US Army. <laughs> I could see where that'd be a problem. But it ended but up for a stage name, I think it's great though. Yeah. It rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it works pretty good. Yeah. That's uh, I, I think I think that's a great one. I didn't know because we've got certain friends, like Cooper Wade. Mm -hmm. It's not his real name. Oh yeah, you know it's not his real name. Yeah, his real name is Jason Witten, but he he doesn't play tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. He's not a retired <laughs> tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Everybody that we where he grew up, North Richland Hills and around Fort Worth, they know him as Jason Witten. Yeah, most people that watch the show know who Cooper Wade is. Don't realize that that's a stage name. But anyway, there, there's people who did it. If I could go back and know. Then what I know now, I would have given myself a, a stage name. Really? Yeah. First of all, people can't pronounce Prather. They say Prather, right? And then the Chad thing, who knew that Chad was going to be the male version of Karen? Yeah. So that's I deal. guess so. I I don't know, man. I My brain doesn't work that way. My brain doesn't really? work. I don't associate things with, like, names with attitudes or anything like that. Like, yeah. the whole Karen thing is stupid. I mean, I it's just dumb. Uh yeah, it's just <laughs> it's funny how that became a thing. Right? It is. It's hilarious how everything becomes a thing. Everything becomes a thing. Everything becomes a thing, and everybody freaks out. And you know, you just, and if you're a a free thinking individual like I like I feel that I am, you just sit back and laugh. Yeah, that's all you can do. You can just laugh. Like right now, I'm just laughing about everything. Yeah, because that's all you can do. So I, you know, people love to they love to go online and rag me because my Wikipedia says I was born in New Jersey. It's a fact. Can't help it. I was. Didn't live there. <laughs> yeah. Didn't grow up there, but that was where my mother had me. Um, and so I'm like, you guys, if that's your thing, that's not a that's not a genuine conversation. Like right. if you really have an issue with me, let's talk about what your issue with me is, other than the fact that, oh, you wear a cowboy hat in your profile picture. Right. Let's let's have a real conversation about it. 
But people are disingenuous. Um, no way. Yeah, they are a little bit. I don't know if you've discovered this or not. Man, I think that every, I just I think everybody's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Everybody has so much integrity, <laughs> just so much integrity, and they're thinkers too, deep, deep thinkers. Deep, th- yeah. That's that's the best thing. The best yeah. thing in oh man, with this AI crap, the best thing is just people sharing things that they think are real. And if you just if you have any if you have any snap at all, you know immediately it's not real. You know immediately it's not. Yeah, I've seen several people sharing things uh, recently. Mm-hmm just in the last couple of days about George Soros being ill and, and all of these kind of things, or then somebody talking about Klaus Schwab with the World Economic Forum being admitted in the hospital, he's seriously ill. And I'm like, guys, these are all AI-generated memes, and you're sharing them like it's real or like it even matters, like it matters. Like you think if, yeah. if, if George Soros died today, his family doesn't carry on his legacy, the Soros Foundation deal doesn't continue doing the same old stuff. So just, you know, stop. But uh, would you... How, how long have you been doing music as a business? Since 2006. I've been playing full-time, my only job since 2006. No kidding. Mm-hmm. You're about 20 years in on that. Yeah. So you're 18 years mm-hmm. as a business doing music. Yeah, and but, you know, up till 2020, I was killing it. Like, I, mean, I was doing $100,000, $100, $200,000 a year. Like, but I was playing 300 shows a year. I mean, I was playing yeah. every night, you know. And then 2020 happened, and it just... You know, it basically made me realize that there's no such thing as freedom in this country. And um, and they, they came in and took my job away from me and then made me depend on them. Mm-hmm. And then now they want that back, you know, because I'm a, I'm a, I was a gig worker, a 1099 worker. It's just all, it's crazy. The world's crazy. So the COVID stuff, the shutdowns, all of that stuff across, we're in Texas, so let's specifically say Texas. Um really hit you hard yeah i'll never recover financially or career-wise from that i mean it's it just it just changed the whole world it changed the whole game Mm -hmm. and so you add that with spotify and and you know everybody becoming famous for not really doing anything just because they can create something on the internet and so there's so much noise out there now so it, it just everything about covid i it changed the whole world yeah and i don't know that i don't know that we'll ever get back what we lost. I really don't. And not, not to be like a pessimist about it. I just, it just really changed the whole structure of everything. Well, and you're not getting younger. Right. That's, and people tend to, in the industry side of entertainment, people look for the younger people. Yeah. No why, label is going to come in and give me money. No. Why they do that, I'm not sure why they do that. Yeah. Um, you know, when Based Records came along and they started in Nashville and Chris Wallen and those guys came to me, they said, we want you to be a part of it what do we need to pay you? I said, I don't want you to pay me anything because I would rather be a partner with what you're doing and play an integral role in in kind of the message of what you're doing. I don't want to be your artist. I don't want to be owned by you. I don't want you to pay me anything. Um, and I'm probably stupid for that, but that's not the first time that I've been stupid about that because I've seen how money gets in the way of certain friendships. But I'm like, go find you some of these 18 and 21 year olds, and that's what they did. They they have found yeah. some really you know talented people. I'm like, I'm 50 years old at the time we were negotiating. I'm 49, 50 years old. I was like, I, I, I'm not some up and coming guy that's trying to make a mark in country music, but behind some record label, yeah. you know, I'm I'm past all that. Right. I, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what does the next 25 years of life look like for me? How do how do we survive? Yeah. It, and, you know, is it in the entertainment industry? Is it, you know, playing the guitar to the point where you find you a rich, good-looking woman who's willing to wipe your ass mm. as you get older? Is that a thing? It, I think it is. Hmm. I, I think, mean, I think my girl would, would wipe. Would I think she would wipe my ass, but she's I don't not think rich. mine would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think mine would wipe my ass, um, even though she doesn't have a sense of smell, which is a plus, you would think. Yeah. Steve Powell, party foul Steve Powell, who who traveled with me for years, is still my buddy, um, and we're trying to get him back to Texas. His wife, she has sworn that she will take care of me in my old age. Yeah. She'll take care of both of us. Just put I me would, but I won't be around. So <laughs> I'm probably I'm going to go out in a ball of flames, son. <laughs> but hey, you so you mentioned we mentioned playing that show at Lake Conroe a couple of years ago. We've done several together. Um, you 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 for all intents and purposes, you basically quit drinking. A couple yeah, of years yeah. ago. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, uh, and, and kudos for you to you on that. Um, I haven't quit. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't quit. 
I also don't get schnockered, you know. I mean, I get to the point where I was like, here's my keys, but I'm not, you know. Yeah. I don't, but you kind of got, you got wild for a while. Well, you? my problem is, is I don't have that here's my keys filter. And yeah. so what would happen is I would go out and get hammered and then drive. You know, that's what I would do all the time. And I got pulled over three times within like three months. Oh, wow. And I got warnings on all of them. And the last one was a state trooper. And I don't even remember getting pulled over. Wow. So I woke up the next day and there was a warning on my seat. And then like two weeks after that was the Houston rodeo in 2022 when I, when I played for a, a tent out there. And then I got, I got wasted and, um, uh, they ended up losing like two of their big sponsors because of it. It was on family sponsor night and got fired and all that stuff. And, you know, luckily, because of the actions I've taken since that day, I basically just quit. And, uh, you know, the rodeo invited me back out this year. So I got to play out there That's this good. year. And so I, I just, I didn't need it anyway. I'm already so far gone when it comes to, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm, I'm a extreme extrovert. Yeah. Right. So I don't need alcohol to get me loose. I don't need to, I don't need to be around people. Um, and so I just don't need it. I do, it's not something I need. Yeah. I know a lot of people need it just to just to get loose, you know? Yeah. And in this industry, you got to be loose because if you're uptight. It's funny because I used to go on stage. I always wanted to have a drink or two before I went on stage just to, you know, because because when I was young, I thought like I was shy. I was I was bashful. I didn't want to talk to girls when I was when I'm like you at co in college. Mm. It's like, well, if I have a couple of beers, I'll lose my inhibitions and I can be a little more outgoing. Yeah. I, I outgrew that. I don't have inhibitions anymore. I'm not shy. So I was like, but I kept on drinking. Mm. And so I, then when I'd get on stage, I was like, ah, maybe I should have a couple of drinks just to relax. And I was like, I don't need that. I don't yeah. need that. So now, especially the older I get, I'm like, you know, I might go out and do a show and, not have a, and won't have a single drink. Now, if somebody brings me, you know, something because they know I like a tequila or a whiskey or something, I, yeah, I'll have it with them. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah. What's the point? Yeah, well, that rodeo gig, that's the first time in my well over 5,000 shows I've played that I've been fired from a venue, from fired from, from a really? gig. So, you showed off, showed yeah. out. No, I took my shirt off and <laughs> talking shit. And like, it was, it was pretty crazy from what I hear. I don't know. But remember. the crazy thing is, I only remember taking two drinks. That's yeah. it. I don't remember anything that happened after the two drinks, but I also didn't eat anything all day. You know that cook off's the devil, dude. You know they don't. It really the is. The food's so that, not ready till seven. Yeah, you got to get there at three thirty, four o'clock to load in. But you know, so by the time the food's ready, you're playing. Yeah. So you don't get a chance to eat, and everybody's just feeding you drinks. Yeah. So See, for those of you who don't know, everybody's heard of the Houston Rodeo. Uh, but prior to the Houston Rodeo, for a couple of days, they have the barbecue Houston Rodeo barbecue cook off, where everybody comes out there to set up these massive tents. These huge companies entertain their guests and their clients. They have live music and there's barbecue and they're just, a, it's just a, it's, it's a time, you know, and it's massive out there, but you're right. Yeah. And so you're sitting out there, you sound check, you play your music or you're waiting to play your music. You're drinking and visiting and yeah, there you go. I'll never play it again. I mean, I made my, I made a vow. I got offered like three different shows this year and I turned them all down. Really? Yeah. It's just not my thing, man. I don't want to go out there. It's too many people. Um, when you're on stage playing, nobody really cares that you're playing. So you're real, you know, so it's a, it's a money thing, but the load in's terrible. They don't have any artists load in. So you have to park four miles. Oh yeah, away. that's true. I you mean, know? you, uh, you, uh, when we were there for the first night, Steve and Ben were coming to load in. they were playing at the tent they play in and I passed them. They were coming over the interstate, carrying their gear yeah. on that over walk, walk over bridge. Yeah. They'd parked way out there. Yeah. That's what, and that's what happened to me. And basically what I came to, at like 10 30 at night just where the old astral world was yeah that's where they park out there and i was just carrying my guitar in one hand and my case in the other and i had no idea where i was at couldn't find my car you know i was too drunk to know that i could just pull my phone up and it tells me where my car's at um <laughs> it was bad man I, I went to the hotel i passed out candace been trying to get in touch with me it was just a bad night it was a bad night all the way around then i had to wake up the next day and play for the mayor downtown at like 11 a.m. It was like 35 degrees outside. I was oh, hung over. Man. It was for the mayor of Houston. It was just, you know, everything about that show. And then and then I got in trouble because my, my song Too Far Gone, we played my song Too Far Gone, and it has the word cocaine in it. But I edited the word cocaine. But there were some fans there that said, oh, it's really funny, Jeff, being on the City Hall steps singing about cocaine. And then so that kind of went viral and – 
just it was you can't just, win. It was just yeah, you just can't. You can't win. So that's why now I just I don't take anything that is going to make me have to taper down who I am. Mm. I'm just not. I'm not going to take it. If you yeah. don't want me, don't book me. That's why it, I quit roofies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been roofied? Taking them or giving them? Have you ever have you ever been roofied? Do you uh, I, think I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I don't know about roofies because what you're describing sounds like that type of. It hits you like yeah. I have been roofied twice that I know of. Yeah, it because I mean it just it was just there. One was one was on my way to a Kenny Chesney concert in Atlanta, Georgia, um, mm. and and again I know how I am. I know how I drink. I know when I know my limits, right. and I don't ever get stupid. Um, that night. I remember uh, um, Gary Allen, and then it was um, uh, Leanne Rimes. I remember a little piece of Brooks and Dunn coming out. I mean, it was one of those all day, all night deals up till Kidney Chesney. Yeah, he even had Sammy Hagar on stage with him that night. I have no recollection. I, had, I might as well not have been there. Right, w- woke up laying on a sidewalk with my feet in the highway. Yeah, yeah, flip flops flip flops in the middle of the road. Yeah, I just I just decided that, that I don't want any more nights like that. But it also wasn't just about me getting really drunk. It was also about me being extremely focused on my career. Yeah. You know, and for the first time in my life, I had something to to actually work for as opposed to just kind of taking. So I'll tell you this. So to that point, because I've seen you, I've seen you numerous times. We've worked together. We've done all kinds of things together. And I've come to a lot of your shows and, and then and then it. Then I was like, well, it's Jeff Canada. You know, he's he's a Houston guy. He plays all over. He stays pretty busy. And then all of a sudden, I started running into people. And they're like, have you ever heard of Jeff Canada? And I was like, yeah, he's a buddy. No shit, really? <laughs> yeah. Dude, we love that guy. We're like fans. We go wherever he goes. And I was like, okay. I was like, that's awesome. I mean, that's, that's good. He deserves that. You should. And, and then I've run into more and more people. And then I came to your birthday show. What was that? Four or five months ago? Yeah. Something over like at that? Sawyer Park. Over at Sawyer yeah, Park. Yeah. And you put on a show. Dude, yeah. I mean, y'all wore it out. That's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. But I'm like this. You, I, but I could tell the steps you had taken to take it to a whole other place. Yeah, like it wasn't party time. Yeah, with a lot of artists, it's just party time. Right. Um, you know, there's a clip of what's his name, uh, um, what's his name, Phil Wallace up there in Fort Worth, falling off the stage at the Thirsty Armadillo or wherever yeah, it was. That. You know that that clip went viral. Him stumbling all over the thing, and uh, he texted me and he goes, "Hey, dude, can I come on your show and let's talk about that?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no. Yeah. You got drunk and you fell off the stage. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of that, but it, but like you could tell. You can see in that, you know, you go back two years when you're recording a live album at do do and then you that night, because there were two very drastically different types of shows, because the night you did your birthday show at Sawyer Park, that was, you rocked that freaking show. Yeah, I like mean, it was loud, band. it was full band, it was powerful, it was boom, you were hitting it, and it was a good show. And um, I was like, you could see in that the business aspect of Jeff Canada, mm-hmm. who said, we're not here to F around, we're going to put on a show, and it's good. And place was full too. Yeah, it was yeah. packed. I mean, it, you you had and you were up against Randall King, who was down the road at Rowdy. Two years in a row, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. And Randall Randall ain't no slouch in pulling tickets. No. Nope. So he was down the road, just literally three miles down the road at Rowdy's. Um, there was all kinds of there stuff. There was all kinds of stuff. There were like three or four things going on that night in competition. And it's in you January. Locally. And January yeah. is notoriously bad, especially those first two weeks of January. It's notoriously bad. In the yeah, nobody goes out. Yeah, because everybody's. They're recovering from Christmas debt. Or that, yeah, either that or they're. And on, hung over. And or they're trying not to drink or trying not to spend money. Doing dry January. Yeah. CJ's family does that every year. Look, we're going to do dry January. It lasts till the 8th. Yeah. I don't even start with those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> start dry January. What is that? I heard I heard her sister last night say she was doing dry April. I'm like, just stop. Yeah. What's wrong with you just people? Just be dry. Just just don't drink. Yeah. If if you have to if you have to have a time yeah. that you have to set aside <laughs> to not do something, you probably should not do those things. <laughs> like I like, you know, I, I managed to manage it. I'll drink today, probably. Yeah. I will. The um, <laughs> uh, you know my protocol a little bit of tequila every day that that is that is my COVID protocol it's tequila quercetin zinc and cocaine I just I'm just saying there I'm just go. saying that's it and Put a roofie it, from time to time every now and then every, it's been about 15 years knock on wood please God don't well I don't want to get it twisted I'm yeah. not in recovery and I want I want that to be really clear because because I've taken you know a couple of shots 
for celebratory reasons over the last two years and i've put those on facebook and then you get people just freaking out that's a slap in the face for everybody doing with sobriety and blah 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 blah. and it's like i'm not i'm not in recovery yeah i didn't quit drinking because i had a drinking problem yeah i quit drinking because i just don't need it and it it you know i don't want to spend the money on it it adds no value to my life i just don't need it and the weed is so much better when you're not drunk so you're doing california sober yeah, I don't. Well, I've, I don't do California anything. <laughs> but but it's uh, like Ron White told what's her name, Lauren, uh, whatever that does the podcast, and she was like, "So, how long have you been sober?" And he goes, "I ain't been sober effing day of my life." Yeah, because <laughs> you know? yeah. he's smoking instead. Yeah, I can't do weed. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a, like a daytime user, but but I I do it every night before bed, and I sleep like a baby. And do you? I'm, I'm off five medications because of it. And no kidding. I'm just, yeah. Maybe I need to try it. I'm not a salesman. You do whatever you want to do. I'm the kind of guy that handle your high. Yeah. Whatever that high is, yeah. handle your high. If you can handle your high, then it's not a big deal. You can do whatever you want. That's a good point. I know people who get high on 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 ego and pop- popularity and narcissism, and they become general assholes. Yeah. If they're not getting it or they get too much of it. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 a thing. That, how many people have been hurt because they can't handle their own personality? Yeah. You know, that's true. Uh, or their own narcissism. I mean, we, we read about people all the time who the relationships have been destroyed. Their homes have been destroyed because of somebody's narcissism. I know a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, I know a lot but, of them. But you make a valid point on that. Handle your high. I, um, I've i smoked weed. I, I don't, I, I just, maybe I just need to do it before bed because yeah. I don't sleep. Yeah. I'll try it. Dude, I eat 100 milligrams every night. You do the gummies? Every night, 100 milligrams. No kidding? Yeah. That's funny, dude. And I, that's you know, a, that's a lot of candy, boy. And I'll stay up. <laughs> I'll stay up uh, late enough. I'll stay up for like a couple of hours and really enjoy it. Yeah. And then I'll fall asleep. And I sleep eight, nine, ten hours every night. And that's I'll awesome. Wake up and I get to work. See, know? that's been my thing that I've always been afraid of because, uh, you know, I, whenever I ever did anything, it was always recreational. And then yeah. I was like, okay, um, I don't want to feel like this during the day because I'll get nothing done. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, people are like, it makes me more productive. Dude. I've never been that. Yeah, I mean, I know a couple of guys like uh, Orion Burroughs, who's a, another singer-songwriter, really good dude. Like, he has to have it because he's so far, like, his mind is so crazy all the time. Yeah. Slade Ham, I don't know if you know Slade or no, not. Slade. He's the same way. I mean, those guys, <laughs> dude, that guy, we, we went on a climbing trip. We climbed a 14er up in Colorado, and <laughs> him and Brian Carrion. Why? They literally smoked the whole way up and the whole way down. And I'm yeah. like, just trying to live. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to smoke on the shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to fall off a cliff. Yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, Steve Powell and I, party fell and I, we, we flew into Denver, I guess. And we had a show there and I was going through an extremely stressful time in life. And I said, dude, just take me to a dispensary. Just take me to a dispensary. So we go and we, we, we bought some stuff. And I mean, it's those dispensaries in Colorado, like some of those downtown are like, they're nice. Like yeah. it's like going into the Tesla shop or the Apple store. I mean, they got stuff under glass cases, everything. So it's like, wow, dude, this is like impressive. Yeah. And so I was like, give me something that'll just help me relax, you know, no anxiety, whatever. So they give it, I go back to the, go back, I smoke a little bit. And it was weird because this dude started trying to sell me drugs like out on the street. He's like, dude, you want some weed? I was like, I can buy it right there in that store. Yeah. Well, I don't want to buy it from you in a back alley. Yeah. It's so, uh, go to the room, take a hit. I don't know, 15 minutes later, I'm sitting butt naked on the edge of my bed, staring out the window, <laughs> contemplating suicide. I was like, this isn't stress-free. <laughs> it just depends, man. You got to really, it's, it's one of those things that you have to like, you have to, you have to play with it to figure out what your like, what is your dose? Sounds like my adolescence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty much the same, actually. <laughs> It's fun for a keep, while. I got to keep playing with myself. It's and then you start depending while. on yeah, it. Yeah, then, you, then it yeah. doesn't feel as great. But, yeah. you know. You just do it more. Yeah, you got to skip it a few days. <laughs> let it let it feel good again. You know what I mean? <laughs> Forget what touch is all about. Yeah. Uh, maybe I need to try that. Maybe I'll sleep. Because I know that a, a, a player to be named later uh, brought me some uh, CBD oil for like put under your tongue at night mm. to try to sleep. And I was like... I don't know if that's going to work either, but I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it, so I don't know. I don't know, dude. I'm, you know, I'm lost you know, in this that's, world. That's, that's 
that's a lot of my problems with with government and these laws that they're <laughs> that they're passing or that they have. You know, the stuff that's illegal. You got people that are that are voting to keep this shit illegal that have never tried it. They've never tried it. So, in my opinion, I think if you have to vote on it, you have you should have to try it. Yeah, I think that it's like it's like being a cop. You have to ride the light, and you have to be tased. Yeah, to, I don't know if you still have to do that, but you know, I when, bet they do. You, you know, I know in the military they do, and and so. Um, I think it should be the same thing. I think I think if in order for you to vote on something, you have to try it. I think even fentanyl, you have yeah. to try it. Give, then, it a, give it a little yeah, shot. Yeah, because then then we then we could eliminate half. It's, these it'd be gone, dude. Yeah. I mean, I've probably built up a tolerance to fentanyl at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's probably no much telling how much I've ingested. But it, and again, there is there there is we were laughing and being facetious on some of these things, but there's a difference between weed and fentanyl. Right, I mean, because because yes. but people think drugs are drugs. Yes, well, it's the they'll, they'll, they'll drink alcohol all day long. Right, but they think oh, a drug is a drug. Yeah, um, I, I've seen. Uh, I, I remember reading Keith Richards' biography, which he's lived long enough; he should write another one. Um, he's lived a whole other life since that yeah. biography. But I remember him saying that the biggest thing he misses uh, is pharmaceutical grade co- cocaine. That you could get in the early seventies before they, yeah. you know, you, you go get a prescription for it, whatever the dentist would give it to you or whatever. He goes, I missed that because it was pure. Now you're snorting stuff that's all, you know, it's got baby ambisol to diesel fuel in yeah. it. It's it's crazy. Well, stuff. I mean, over regulation is has proven to it, people are still going to do it even though you regulate it. Yeah. With laws or however you want to do it. People are still gonna do it. People are still gonna go and and whenever you make stuff illegal, it just creates a whole nother dangerous and that's where we're at. That's where we're at that. You know, it's prohibition for drugs. Yeah. And that's where we're at in this country. And it's sad. And but, I know I know people who make a very strong argument about outlawing everything. And then I because they've most of the time they've lived through something or their kid abused it or you know what I'm saying? And so that's that becomes the litmus test standard for everybody in the world, which is unfair. Me personally, I think if you legalize things like weed, then in this this is a soundbite that somebody will come back and try to use against me. I'm just being <laughs> dead level honest with you, and I've stated this before that I think it would reduce the abuse if if it were legalized. Right? It takes a lot of the illicit stuff off the streets. It eliminates the people who were dealing in in a lot of ways. If you made it now at the same time, you know, you look at statistics. I don't know. I, I haven't looked in a long time, but I think Colorado's had some issues on there. Everything from taxes to you know increase of homelessness and things like that, but I don't know. But uh, it's weird. I, you got to own your high. Yeah, that's you the best that's the way. To say, you got to yeah. handle your high. Yeah, and also the creating the homelessness is it the legalization of weed or is it their liberal policies all to all the way around? Right. And that's what you got to figure out. Is like. You know, I, I and that's just, in every big city in America. Yeah. So I mean, my that, problem is, I was born and raised ultra, ultra far right wing conservative. Really? I'm talking about full on, like as far as you can go. That no way. kidding, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's the way I was raised. And then when I got out of my hometown, uh, when I was like 20, 21, I started working at Oldfield and started working with people of all. Sure. And then started traveling the world, and uh, I. But then I swung a far left. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about far left. So I put my 25 to. 35, I was pretty far left, and uh, I couldn't get on board with any of the Republican nothing. I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't get with it, you know. And and now I'm getting older and smarter, <laughs> wiser, so I've come back to the center. Yeah, and I really can't stand either side, yeah. to be honest with you, because I just <laughs> understandably think, so. I just think they're all trampling on all of our freedoms, and and you know used to the republican party was the the party of uh, personal freedom mm-hmm. and they're not that anymore um and so i don't know what's going to happen but it's it's a crazy world we live in right well, now well what man. you said earlier is a, is a is a very true statement it, when the covid thing hit and you shut down everything you realize we're we're not a free country no and, and both and, sides and both sides are the problem yeah both sides are the problem that's why people try to call me out and they're like you're a republican I'm, like, I'm not a republican you, you know i've run for office as a republican because that was what i had to do but don't put me in that party deal because i'm well, not that, that we got to get away from the labels period let's just get completely away from the labels yeah because i'm telling you right now and i know you don't you don't agree with this but like me i'm pro-choice i'm not pro-choice as in go sleep with as many people as you can and then kill all your babies pro-choice but I'm pro-choice because I take everything as a practical matter, not a beliefs matter. And so I think if you put it at 12 weeks or 15 weeks or whatever that is and say, before that, <laughs> suck <Yeah>. them out. <laughs> pull, the, 
<laughs> pull, pull the vacuum cleaner and my my thing is I want to live in a society where people value human life. I, and I agree with that 100%, but they're it's going to happen anyway. They're going to do it anyway, no well, matter that, what. My thing is if if you found if you found, you know, a pile of cells on Jupiter, they would they would spend trillions of dollars trying to protect that pile oh, of cells. But yes. my thing there is, my thing there is that it's but, but they would value that, but you don't value the cells in your womb. That my thing is and, and and like you said, don't use abortion as birth control. Right. I mean, that eliminates ninety seven percent of abortions in America right now yeah. if you're not using it as as convenience yeah. and, and and birth control. But also, my big problem with with both sides, with politics in general, is the fact that we focus so much on the minority of things. Yeah. And let's just put this into perspective, just real quick. Abortion. <laughs> Again, I'm not for it. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm. No one's pro abortion. They're pro-choice. I don't think anybody's like, no. You're I think there's a few out there now who are. Oh, uh, you're probably Maybe, right yeah. because we got some crazy the, fucking people in this yeah, world. Yeah, their whole shout your abortion people. I think they yeah, can Yeah, you're, you're probably. I mean, you got queers for Palestine. Come on. <laughs> yeah, plan B is their plan A. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's just more of like a practical thing, right? It's like they're going to do it. People are going to do it. And to me, if the, if, if, a, if the life is not viable outside the womb, whatever week that is, I think it's 18 weeks. I don't know. I'm pulling that right out of my ass. Well, I think I think the youngest uh, birth was like 22 weeks that survived. Okay, so something in that neighborhood. And, and the way I look, that's kind of the way I look at it. It's yeah. not. I don't condone it. I would never do it. I don't. Well, I say that. I can tell you this much: if my 13 year old son came back to me right now and said his girlfriend's pregnant, I might think about it. Yeah. And I know that's it's sad and it's a hard it's a hard truth, but. But I might, I might think about it. I might think about supporting that. I, I know that's hard to admit, but um, you know, I don't want him. I don't want his whole life ruined because of one stupid, stupid decision. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I just, I know, you know. I mean, my niece, she was born when my other, my great niece was born when my niece was sixteen, and she was walking into a Planned Parenthood. Somebody stopped her and said, hey, across the street, we can do an ultrasound if you want to see what you're about to do. And they did it, and she changed her mind. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that decision that was made. At the end of the day, like yes, I said, I, I just want it, it back to the label thing. Like, I, I wish that we could get to a point where we say, listen, I believe certain things. This is how I would handle it in my life. I don't want to make a blanket statement and tell you this is how you have to live your life. This is the libertarian in me that says, listen, you're not hurting somebody else. Um, you know, live your life the way you, now in abortion. I do believe you are hurting somebody else, yeah. but there are there are those fringe situations where you get into a philosophical dilemma. CJ and I were just talking about this the other day because we have a friend who is in the hospital. Uh, the baby, I think, is 16 weeks in her womb, but because of this heartbeat bill thing going on in Texas. Uh, she, they've got her in the hospital. She can't deliver, but they can't abort. And she doesn't want to abort, but at any time she could end up with a sepsis or something like that. And, and it, her life is literally at risk in this situation. Yeah. So you get into these, these dilemmas of, of, and you're like, it's her life. I mean, it's her choice to make in that regard, right? What she's going to end up doing. And, and God, you know, at the end of the day, all you can do is be like, hey, man, I, that's, that's hard. Yeah. It's a hard thing. I, I can't, I can't, that is one place where I'll step up and say, I can't make that decision for that person. Right. I appreciate the fact that she values that life and, and, the, and, and I value that life. I want that life to survive. And, and, you know, CJ, she just kind of summarized the conversation. She said, wouldn't that be a miraculous story if at the end of the day that she, this child ends up surviving, you yeah. know, because again, right now it's against all odds. Yeah. But again, and, but again, but and again, also surviving with what life too. I mean, you see, you have that right. question and there's just all kinds of questions, but again, What's going on right now with identity politics, and I guess it's been this way a long, long time, but it's even worse now, is that we focus so much on the minority. Yeah. Here's the simple fact. 50% of the population is or a little over that is women, right? Yep. So that means that eliminates 50% of us that aren't going to get abortion, right? You can't get one. I can't get one. Regardless of what the left says, I can't have an abortion. <laughs> uh, so, so that eliminates that. And then most people, most, the majority of women are not going to get an abortion. Right. Right. But yeah. Especially these days. Right. But yet we focus so hard on that one thing. Same thing with transgender. Same. You just go down the list. And so what we're doing is we're letting America slip right out of our hands because we're fighting over all of these fringe issues when yet any 
body on the planet can see what's going on the southern border and realize that needs to be stopped like right now. <laughs> and neither so, side's doing anything. Well, they're not to, going to. Yeah, and that's where we're to. at. I mean, the Republicans, they can't let Biden get a win no matter what. Even if it's the best thing for the country, they can't let Biden get a win. Yeah. So they're so the whole government's failing us right now. And as, plus as and plus the the establishment Republicans, which would be, you know, the party of George W. Bush. George W. Bush was horrible on the southern border. Because yeah. again, those Republicans do believe in in boosting the economy through cheap labor. Yeah. They do believe in that. Now they'll say all day long we need to close the border, but they've allowed that. Well George then close Bush the, was one of the worst. Then close the border and come up with a worker program. Come up with a worker it's program. Not that I, I said that when I was running for office. Yeah, there's so many ways we could fix everything really fast. Yeah. Like, you know what? First thing I would do if I was in charge of the world, besides remove speed bumps and school zones, uh, <laughs> would be um, it would be to eliminate all income taxes, all of them, and go to a straight consumption tax. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you go to a store, what you buy, you pay a percentage of that on. Yeah. And that way, everyone is buying into the system. If you're a legal immigrant and you come in here and you buy a gallon of milk, you're paying the same tax as somebody that's not. Yeah. If you're a billionaire and you buy a yacht, you're paying a tax, and that way everyone is buying into the system. You eliminate the need to go after civilians for not paying a fucking income tax. Sorry. Uh, there's just so many things that can be fixed up. You don't have to kill the IRS. The IRS will just go to going towards the companies, you know? Yeah. These companies that have teams that can, like, like take me, for example. I'm an independent artist, right? I have no team. Uh, you know, I don't have anybody to help me with anything. Right. Because I'm an individual doing something. But yet, if... If you're Shell, you know what I mean, or Exxon, and you go to a gas station, they have they have bookkeepers, and they have they have to, you right. know what I mean. And it would be way easier if they could just focus on those companies and go after them for not paying their taxes yeah. and get off our backs. Yeah, and, and that's that's one of those deals where the, my CPA at the end of the year says, "Well, you had like 185 1099s," and I'm like, "Well, all I can do is give you power of attorney to go in there and get them because there's no way I guarantee you half of them got lost in the mail." Right. Uh, and then I'm gonna get taxed on that, and then you know, I, and while it looks like I might have grossed a whole lot of money in the year, I paid people that worked for me. Uh, you know, there was there was everything from buying T-shirts to sell at a show on down the road. I mean, it, yeah. all this kind of stuff, and it's like at the end of the day, did I really make that much money? <laughs> no, I mean, I made a livable wage. Uh, but the IRS don't see it that way. No. And, and, and so, so back to the other point, like we focus on these fringe things. I think the biggest reason we focus on these fringe things. Is because certain things are at a point now where um, it's shoved down your throat. Like, you know, you can go back and look at uh, Joe Biden or Barack Obama or Bill Clinton talking about abortion being safe, legal, and rare. Now you have people saying, shout your abortion and taking their plan B pills on on, on public television, you know, because they're yeah. saying, we're, by God, we're going to do it. And then you have the transgender thing where the other day, you know, you got this high school boy that beat the hell out of these girls in track. I mean, there's a picture oh, of him. He's yeah. like 100 yards in front of them. And I'm like, okay, yes, those are fringe groups, but now it's become transgender. Like this, it's trendy to be these things. And so now that I think that people see that and they're like, God, you know, we, we gave we we gave you all these rights and now you're pushing it down our throats. And so that's where the labeling comes in. That's where the vitriol comes in. That's where the phobic stuff that we're, you know, people are accused of. And it's like, no, we just want to get back to some common sense. Right. And, you know? and I agree with all of that. Because I said, because I said, I said, even when I was running for office, I, you know, I pitched a, a consumption tax idea of saying, you know, we're being taxed on everything. What I should do is say, hey, listen, OK, I need to make a choice. If I'm going to buy this item. I, there's a tax I'm going to have to pay on it. And then I make the decision. Right. Financially, fiscally, is this is this something I want to go buy? Yeah, because we're taxed left and right on everything. On this, I mean, it's disgusting, and and there's no solutions from the Republicans. You know, I said when Obamacare came out, and and everybody was bitching about Obamacare, and then uh, they thought Hillary Clinton was going to get elected after Barack Obama's eight years, and then Trump came in there. Nobody expected Trump to get elected in sixteen, and so the Republicans had no solution to Obamacare. They were like, uh, right. we didn't know we were going to have power. But they don't want to fix it. That's the problem. They don't want to fix it. None of them want to fix anything. Yeah. Because if they fix it, then they don't have anything to stand on. It's no longer about <laughs> who the best candidate is. It's who can sling the most mud. Yeah. And and it's just, it's terrible. It's so bad. And you wonder you wonder why, why kids are bullies on the internet. And it's because that's what they see. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and the, the total just... The the lack of insight by just the American public blows my mind. Yeah. Because it's like 
you got these people that are Trumpers that are so hardcore Trump that no matter what the guy does, it's right. And no matter what the other side does, it's wrong, no matter what it is. And I don't give a shit who you are or where you're from or how smart you are. No one is right all the time. Right. No one. Right. You're not. I'm not. And and sometimes, you know, the whole thing about politics is compromise. And you got to give the other team a win sometimes. You know what I mean? You have That's to. That's politics. It's politics. You have to. I said to Damani Felder, who was on the show a couple of weeks ago, I said, you know, these politicians keep creating all these problems so they can then come up with campaign promises to fix those problems. Right. The problem is now we've created such a long laundry list of problems that they're out of our control. Yeah. Now they're just massive. But they're not out of our problem. control if we will do something as American people. And I'm not talking about storming the Capitol. I'm not talking about <laughs> bombing buildings. I'm not talking about anything like that. But if we would just do one thing, and that is have the ability to sit down with someone that, dis that, that disagrees with you and have a conversation. I'm not talking about a fight. I'm not talking about an argument. I'm talking about a conversation. Yeah. That's what we need, and that's what we need everywhere. Because I'm telling you right now, without conversation, there is no gateway for respect. Yeah. There's just not. I find it interesting, though, because I know a lot of people who are left-leaning. A lot. They're my friends. Um, you know, we're in the entertainment industry. You're going to have that. Um, and we get along fine. We can get around each other and not talk about politics. I mean, you know, there's a couple of them every now and then that have taken a jab at me online. But I try to remind people what I do online or on a podcast or whatever. I mean, this this is this is I talk about these things. That is part of my shtick. I talk about these things, but I talk about them from a from a genuine perspective of what I believe. And then you have people who say, "Well, I don't want to. I don't want to get around that guy. He's some crazy what right wing nut." I'm like, dude, you you labeled me before you ever even had a talk with yeah, me, and that's the problem. And that is a problem. And and then there's a there's a, a you know a, a lot of folks out there who are, and I know for a fact, I've just been with them. I just had a bottle of champagne with one guy uh, three weeks ago. We sat down and had a good time. We didn't never talked about politics, and I know where he stands politically. Yeah, but we're still buddies. We're still friends. Yeah, because it's these like, days. I don't think you can do that. People believe what they believe because of their their experiences. Yeah. After a certain age, before twenty five, you're dumb. Like everyone's dumb before twenty five. Sure. But after you're twenty five, your frontal cortex is developed, and you start actually experiencing life, and you have heartbreak, and you have you get fired from jobs, and you you know all kinds of stuff. Then you see the world in a much different place, and you become your experiences. That's what you become. And I can't knock. I'm sorry, but I can't knock a a 35 year old black man that grew up in the middle of Detroit for having his beliefs. He's he is his experiences, just like he can't knock me, a 45 year old boy from the country, about my experiences. Mm -hmm. It's our experiences make us who we are. And basically, what you're doing whenever you attack somebody for their beliefs, you're attacking them for their experiences. And that's just disrespectful. Yeah. And we shouldn't do that. Yeah. You know, now if somebody's a total douche canoe, then that's a whole different story. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what? You, we all know those people. You sure. know what I mean? That's a different story. But for just a normal, everyday person, that's that's what we are, the middle 80% of this country, we've got to start communicating. And we've got to start saying, hey, the adults are now in the room. Children, shut up. Yeah. Like you over here, you that are screaming that it's okay for a man to swim with women, shut up. Yeah. You oak you that's over here that's saying it's okay for, you know, racism to happen or whatever you want to call it. But also not everything's racist and not everything's homophobe and not everything's transphobe. And I can say something and disagree with you and not be the enemy. Yeah. But yeah. yet we're labeled. You say something bad about trans and it's like you're a transphobe. No, I'm not actually. I know a few of them and I actually support the movement. Like if you want to Chop your wiener off, chop it off, as long as you're 18. As long as you're 18. Or really 25. Really? I, think, I mean, you should be 25 when that prefrontal cortex is developed. Right. I think 25 should be the age of almost everything except for, obviously, joining the military and drinking a beer. Yeah. I think if you're 18, you could die for this country, you should be able to drink a beer for this country. That's yeah. what I think. I agree with that. The uh, A <laughs> couple of things you said there. You know, the, the pastor at the church that I go to, uh, Sunday mornings, he said that a couple of weeks ago about we're like five year olds pointing at each other. Yeah. At some point in time, the adults have got to enter the conversation and be like, okay, stop. Yeah, but they like, can't. again, criticizing somebody for their clothing or their name or where they were born, that's disingenuous. That's hey, you're just trying to be a dick. Right. Right. You, you're not here to solve problems, get to know anybody, build relationships. You don't care about the, the outcome. You just want to be right. But that's what it is now. I mean, I just saw yeah, the other how day, can I own you? I saw a TikTok of, uh, 
Marcus is it Morgan or Mark Morgan Latrell. Morgan is a congressman. Yeah, Morgan Latrell, a nice guy. I've met him a few times. Uh, I saw a video of him and a bunch of congressmen out after they were having a big long discussion about EVs, right? Yeah. And don't even get me started on that shit. But, um, <laughs> and he's just out there, and they're just like showing all the Democrats leaving all in gas powered vehicles, and he's they're just like spewing this like look at this but you know just like overly doing it and, and that's my point our leaders yeah. are doing that it's childish and so what are we going to do yeah you know what i mean and well again we we've it's got childish. we've we've elevated trolling right right we've elevated that to some kind of you know i'm going to own you with a meme or yeah. i've seen you know the left can't meme and it's like okay they're supposed to be funny but we've lost that like, you know i have people all the time who'll say something smart ass to me I had a guy yesterday who, you know, these guys always come at you with these little threats. You, you know? get it online, dude. I, I do. It's Twitter hilarious. is the worst. X, whatever they call it. Um, the uh, There's always some miserable person on there. I mean, I can post that Jesus loves you and somebody's going to just, you know, I, I post the scripture on Sunday morning. And someone's like, oh, yeah, you believe in an imaginary uh, uh you know, spirit rapist, you know, called God. I, I'm like, what is, can you just scroll on? It's, I mean, they can't. I they know can't. guys like that. Uh, Rob Mungle, who's a good friend of mine, who's a comedian, he's like ultra, ultra left, like ultra. And he, he, he gets up and talks about all that stuff. And I can't, you know, I don't know if you know this about me or not, but I'm not a Christian, right? I'm not a believer, if right. you will. Um, and I, and I haven't been since I, since I left my hometown again, the way I, just the way I was raised. But, man, like, if I go to a funeral and they say, bow your head, I bow my head. Yeah. It's a respect thing. It's a you respect. know what I mean? But also, I'm not going to knock anybody for what they believe. Like, you you can believe whatever you want to believe. Just yeah. until it's until it, it starts creating your actions to impede on other people's freedoms. Then well, I you care. know, I had a guy, like I said yesterday, who came at me. And he's, you know, you're a punk, you're blah, 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 you're this and that. Call me a Karen. <laughs> I'm a Chad, bitch. <laughs> I'm a Chad. Get it right. <laughs> He, he went that route too, and uh, and he was like, he was like, go f your babysitter, and I was like, well, you I lost your mom's number, right? <laughs> and I knew what he was gonna do because they always they're so Purdue. My mother died in 2018. I said, well, that's a weird coincidence. So did my babysitter. <laughs> and so you think you're a comedian? That ain't funny. Blah blah blah. That's I'm like, hilarious. Whatever. And I was like, I was like, okay, I, I wasn't really wasn't trying to impress you with my comedic prowess. I was just trying to tell you to shut the f up. But you also, know? you're being a bitch. And like I, right. my mom died in 2018. Like yep. really, she really did, and I miss her every day. But man, when somebody does a good mom joke on me, <laughs> oh I cannot help I mean, but what are you laugh. Do? I, I mean, just laugh. I, I've lost a parent. You know, I, okay. If, if if it's funny, then it's funny. I just laugh, and well, and I'm not gonna say. By the way, my mom's dead because yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to piss on their good time. They just had a great time by giving right. me a really good mom joke. Right. And, and so so I went on, I went I went on Facebook and. Uh, and I found the guy. He was one of these guys who was using the fake name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I found who he really was. And I went back on. I said, okay, you win, Jason. And then he blocked me. Because right. <laughs> what happened That's was I leveled, I leveled the playing field. Yeah. Because now you're not hiding anymore. I know who you are. Like, I just took away your anonymity on this deal. Yeah. And, and, and you didn't like that. So I'm like, okay, you wanted to troll me. You elevated that. Like you thought that this was going to be a really genuine conversation by you calling me a Karen. It wasn't. Uh, so I I was bored and I wanted to boost the algorithm. So I was willing to bitch with you. Yeah. For, you know, yeah. we could sit and spit. Yeah. So and I'm down with it, man. When somebody gets on my social media, and it, I mean, obviously, you know me, I'm pretty divisive on there. Not <laughs> not as much as I used to be, but it's like. Uh, it's funny if somebody comes on there and, and starts trolling me, I will gladly get with them. But the ones I can't stand are the ones that are going to come in and talk smack. And then as soon as you get back with them, then they block you or then they then report you. I had one yeah. the other day uh, for my birthday. Every year I make the same post on my birthday. Hey, if you guys want to contribute to my album, if all of my followers do send me one dollar on Venmo, I can finish my record. You know. Yeah. And so every and I do it every year on my birthday, and I always make a few hundred bucks <coughs> off of it. And this guy, Stephen Eddy, he lives up in North Texas somewhere. He just gets on and tells me I'm if I would write <coughs> songs that mattered, people would just all this wow. crap. And so I let him go for a while, and then I actually defended him on some of the comments because my fans just <laughs> went after. I know this how dude. that goes too. Yeah. And so I defended him, but then he got <laughs> then he got really nasty, and so I came back at a pretty nasty comment, but yeah. funny. And he like he reported me to Facebook, mm. and so as soon as that happens, as soon as it, it's like it's the same as we we got those friends right the 
the friends that like to come to you bust balls, but as soon as you turn it on them, they yeah. get all sensitive about it. Yeah. Same thing. And I'll pun- if I'm going to punch you in the face in real life for that shit, I'm definitely going to block <laughs> you on Facebook. Yeah. I, uh, and I get to a point sometimes where I'll go on Twitter and I immediately feel my blood pressure start to rise because it's just a war zone on there. And it's like, you guys aren't serious. You know, like most of my posts are a tongue in cheek twist on you know, like the kid that won the the track meet against all the girls. And I'm like, could we just stop calling it girl sports at this point? Right. And just call it, it's it's men's sports. They're yeah. winning it all. So, um, yeah, it, it's just dumb. How, t- how off the rails is that shit? <clears throat> like, I don't know anyone. I honestly do not know a single person that supports that. Not one. Not in real life. No, not in real life. You know, I the know the problem a lot. is the problem is not who supports it. The problem is the people who, who let it go, like the parents or the kids that are choosing to participate. Yeah. in that deal, it's just a crazy world, man. It's we're yeah. we're it's a crazy world. It's a crazy time. World War Three is about to pop off. <laughs> you know, but I'm the kind of guy that's ready, dude. I I'm the kind of guy that wants Trump to get reelected, and then like day three, <coughs> just just hit the red button and sees what ha- see what happens. <laughs> like I'm ready for some Book of Eli shit, man. I'm ready, Mad Max. <laughs> Light it up, like, Mad Max, Road Warrior. Either A, you know, you know what would be perfect is like an EMP blast <laughs> that just shuts down the grid for like five years. It would do it. Because you it. would have 20% of the twenty percent of the population kill themselves in the first week because social media doesn't work. Like they would be gone. They wouldn't know how to survive. I mean, you saw what happened when AT&T went down a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <clears throat> people couldn't log on. Facebook went down for like 30 minutes and you thought it was people the People losing their mind. I mean, when, whenever Instagram has a glitch... My phone blows up with people. Yeah. Steve Helms, is your Instagram acting up or have I been hacked? Yeah. Like, come on. Like all these people that are for these electric vehicles and shit. It's and I think they're cool. I think you should they have cool. you should have they're, a choice to buy one. It's a fun toy. It's yeah. yeah. And and if and listen, if you want to drive one, drive one. That's yeah. awesome. But you also need to really look into what it takes to make those and how much oil bought products are in that car and how bad it is. How much coil. Yeah. Like coal coal. Yeah. And how makes those coils. And how yeah. and how the stuff to make the batteries can't be ethically mined. It's not right. ethically mined anywhere, no matter what Apple's telling you. It's just not. Right. But yet they just they they go for it. But what my thing is is take it from a pra- take your feelings out of it and just go from a practical standpoint. And let's just say something does happen and an EMP blast happen, right? Let's just say it does happen. We know the technology is out there. So what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do when you can't plug your car in? What are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to have to go depend on somebody's got a gas powered car, right? Yep. I mean that's it. That's what you're going to do. And not only that. It was going to, and there's books written about this. It would take about 72 hours for the bad guys to realize that the, you can't call the good guys. Right. So, like, they're, they're going to come get you because the, the police aren't coming. Yeah. You well, know? we've already proven that. Too. Police aren't coming anyway. Yeah, they're not coming now yeah. anyway, especially so, if you're in a big city. If you're in a big yeah. city, you're, I mean, the odds of cops coming to help you out before you're dead are. Yeah, it ain't happening. Yeah, it's not happening. But then if you fight back, you go to jail. Right. You know. Right. And these squatters, these, I, I heard some people up here at Carlton Woods. Uh, I visited with some folks yesterday. They have a, a home over in Carlton Woods. For those of you who don't know, that's that's a huge, gorgeous mm-hmm. golf community over here near us. Massive houses, gated community. They're dealing with squatters, and they can't and they can't get rid of them. The, the police are like, "Hey, listen, give them some food, and they'll go away tomorrow." And it's like, "Well, you're going to find their dead body." Okay, we'll send a car. And that's what I'm like, like. You basically have to threaten these people's lives before the cops yeah, will even come but over. But that's there. the kind of shit I'm talking about about over about overcorrecting, right? As the United right. States says, what we do. Nine eleven happened, right? What nine eleven happened, and what did we do? We all fucking jump behind the Patriot Act. Woo! Let's go. Worst thing in the world. Worst thing in the world. And now they're coming back, and you know they're they're they see everything we do, and we have no freedoms because of it. You got to yeah. take your shoes off at the airport because I got C four on my fucking toenails. It's just so <laughs> strange to me, but. <laughs> like what what are we going to do you know and so and and so we overcorrect everything just like the me too movement you know we, nobody can deny there's it's out there that there were atrocities by men towards of women course, as long as people have been alive it's like yeah and so you know and and I'm not for that shit you know what i mean but slapping a girl on the ass is not the same thing as drugging her and having sex with her right and and but yet we overcorrected and people lost i mean louis ck lost his career because he Jerked off in front of a woman. Yeah, lost it, making a comeback now. He It'll is. never be what it was. It, it won't. I mean, he was on top of the world yeah. when that happened. It'll never be what it was. And so, and and also with all this cancel culture stuff, is really what you're doing is you're taking away people's ability to grow. Yeah. 
And that's what it is. No personal growth. Well, that's a great point. That's a great point. Let me unpack that a little bit because what you said is profound. I, I want to think through that for a second. So if, if I made a mistake, if I screwed up, whether it was a mistake or just a blatant stupid thing that I did, and you say, okay, you're out, X. Okay, you, you, inev- you, you stopped my journey right there. You didn't say, hey, let's correct you. Let's help you. Let's fix you. Let's let's explain to you. Let's heal you, restore you. No, it's just, you're out. Well, that human being is still alive and still going to live in that mentality. Yeah. So basically, you're just creating a repetition of the same behavior. But now they got nothing to lose. Yeah. Because you took it all from them. But also, you're, you're the same people that are bitching and moaning and complaining about those people are the same people that want to stand up for the criminals that go out and rob somebody, and they want to give them every chance on the freaking planet yeah. to rehabilitate. Yeah, there was a um, – where was it? I'm going to look it up real quick. There's a um, – Which is insane to me. Yeah. We've jumped the shark, bro, I don't, and I don't know that it'll ever get – I, I don't know that we ever will either because it's it's a bad – it's it's gotten so bad. Like, here's one um, – uh, Jean Carlos Zarzuela, 30 years old, punched an elderly woman, was released without bail. Days later, without provocation, he punches a nine year old girl in New York City Grand Central Station. So, again, that's the whole no bail system that they're using up there. But even with the bail, you know, we had an issue a couple weeks ago, the, the, the HEB over on 99 and the Grand Parkway and Rayford Road. It's a, it's a nice area over there. I, I used to live over there. Uh, there was a guy that was walking around in there and he was playing with himself while following kids. Yeah. And so they busted him. And when they busted him, they went through his phone and they found video Im- videos of his wife performing oral on their great Dane. Yeah. Okay. So they story, both yeah. got arrested. He got on $50,000 bond. She was on 5,000 bond. They were out the next day and they were saw in Kroger. Why is he even out? Yeah. Why is someone like that even allowed to get out until you figure out what's going on? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no doubt about it. They shut the mental institutions down. So they're running the streets. Yeah. And they're on TikTok. <laughs> they're, they're, and what's funny is you'll share, you'll share some of these clips of these people saying and doing the most insane, asinine things. And you're like, why are you so hateful? I, I, how am I hateful? I'm just sharing. You're just seeing with your own eyes yeah. what they're doing and saying. Yeah. I'm just exposing it. I didn't add commentary to it. Yeah, you, this is insanity. Just repost, that, and it's and it's all you, like you're you're spreading hate. I'm not spreading hate. I'm spreading the insanity because yeah. I'm just showing you their insanity. Yeah, but you know, but also there's got to be a line. Like, what is the line? Like murder, obviously. If you kill someone, you're going to go to prison. Yeah. Uh, but you don't. If you murder, like if I murder someone today, I'm not going to be out of jail tomorrow. Right. So why is it okay for someone that's doing a sexually illicit act with a kid? Why is he out tomorrow? Right. Right. Because I would argue that that's worse than murder. Yeah. But see, you talked about earlier about the, you know, the government shut everything down. We lost Mm. our jobs. We lost our ability. And this is why I kept talking about there's so many little tyrannies out there, whether it's corporate tyranny, government tyranny, judicial tyranny, educational tyranny. You know, it's so much crap and we're all under it. Yeah. And and it's like, how does how does the average person get out from under you all that crap? And you can't do anything about it. That's right. the worst part. The worst part is I can't do anything about toll roads. And now every road in this town is toll road. Yeah. And I can't do any I have no And they're never going away. They're never going away. And now you get on ninety nine and I'm paying ten bucks or twenty bucks to get from here to Katie and I gotta mm-hmm. drive forty miles an hour because y'all didn't build it right to begin with. <laughs> right. And it's like so now you're rebuilding it, right? And just, and you take that to cell phones. You know, you go to, if you have Verizon or AT and T. I don't know about you, but I'm spending like 250 bucks a month on Verizon, another hundred something dollars on AT and T because all the iPads that I need for my job, and half the shit doesn't work. Yeah. Why am I paying a pr- a premium price for something that doesn't work? Yeah. Ah, the world we live in, Shutter. I'm telling you, dude. Mm. I keep saying, man, the dogs, biscuits running around here. The dogs have it made. Oh. Until until the EMP hits and that's what we're going to eat. But yeah. the dogs have it made. They I, show up. They, I can think of a few people I'm going to eat before yeah. I'm going to eat a dog. Yeah, yeah. The uh, gonna, they they come up here. She pisses pisses indiscriminately on the floor. That's why this room smells like a mixture of shit and Febreze. And uh, she's cute though. She's cute. That's the only thing she contributes to the household. Yeah, well, Just a little bit of cuteness. And when the sun sweet. comes up in the morning at six o'clock in the morning, she comes and licks me right in the face. It's like, hey, it's time to feed me, Jack. Mm-mm. <laughs> Dude, my room at my house, I, I, you know, I live, I rent a room from a friend 
and I have a box fan on this side of my bed, a box fan on this side of my bed, a complete blackout cell shade, yeah. and my door is shut. And so there is, I don't have my phone on. They could, World War II could pop off, whatever. You'll know about the EMP when the fans stop blowing. That's when I'll know. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that, that's, that's like, <laughs> that's what I worry about nowadays. Like, that's, I'm not, you know, because here's the deal, man. You can spend all of your time stressed out about where the world's at. Yeah. But there's nothing we, really, there's nothing we can do about it unless we're all going to collectively stand up and do something bad together. Yeah. And then you're rebuilding. Yeah. Then you're rebuilding. And I don't think we have people, we don't have the men that are strong enough mentally or even physically with the wherewithal to rebuild a society. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem. Yeah. The biggest problem with America, especially, yeah. is that the men of today are not the men of 50 years ago. No, it's pitiful. And I made a joke the other day. Uh, it wasn't even a joke, but it, I, it was like a, I shared a, a thing about World War II, about the guys that fought in the Pacific, because my yeah. grandfather fought in the Pacific. And that was anybody that fought in inland, you know, in, in uh, Europe – will tell you those guys in Pacific are badasses. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and man, I just, I was like, man, you know, we don't have these, this type of men anymore. And those, that, and all guys were that way back then. Yeah. Now we got a bunch of, you know, soft bitches. Oh, it's horrible. I made a and I'm not saying like your Green Berets and your, yeah. you know, your SF guys. They're oh, not those badasses. guys are out there. They're badasses. They're out there, but you don't have, you don't have the, the guys, the young men that were put through real physical education in school. Right. Uh, performance test requirements, you know, can you do 100 sit-ups in 60 seconds kind of thing. I mean, it was, you know, or however long you do it, a couple of minutes. But they don't they don't put any kids through that. What's your What's your thoughts on RFK Jr.? I did want to bring this up. There's, today. there's, uh, well, I, I agree with him wholeheartedly on his stance on the vaccines, mm -hmm. uh, both for babies, children, and, you know, all the way up to the mRNA stuff, the COVID stuff. I don't agree with him on the climate. I don't agree with him on abortion. I don't agree with him on the size of government, the scope of government. Uh, I mean, he's a climate alarmist. He does believe that, I mean, to the point of, of anybody that's violating the the environment needs to be put in prison. I mean, he's come all the way out with that stuff. Over well, he, he, I mean, that though his, his, he's, I mean, that's what he's famous for is cleaning up the Hudson River. Yeah. Which I is mean, a good thing. Yeah, it, but he can't. He's gone all all the way out of like actually calling for people to be arrested if they're not you know abiding by certain things. So I, I can't really g haw with that. Yeah, um, I think he's a free thinker, and I appreciate that. I think he's I think he's a critical thinker, and I appreciate that. Um, but but like so many of them who have been just indoctrinated, you know, he grew. I mean, the, the Democratic Party rejected him, obviously. But he's an in, he was indoctrinated by the Democratic Party. He thinks the Democratic Party has run off and left the the, the Democratic Party of his father and his uncle, which they have. They have, <laughs> um, and I can appreciate his perspective on that. He's got a lot of great perspectives. I just disagree with him on those things. Yeah, you know, he uh, he waffled on the on the on the abortion thing and went all the way back up to third trimester, willing to abort at third trimester. So I don't agree with that. No. Um, so. You know those issues. I, I is, uh, is he better than Joe Biden? I, I don't know. I could make the argument that he is, but I don't know. Well, Biscuit's better than Joe Biden. Biscuit's got more mental clarity, that's for sure. I mean, and, and, but, and, and RFK said something. I don't mean to interrupt you, but, but just finish that thought. RFK said something that that I that I that I want to explore a little bit further on a podcast with um, I think it was with the Hodge twins, where he said um, recently that Trump and Biden are just the flip side of the same coin. It's like they mirror each other in a lot of ways because they 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 are rallying a certain base. And I, I want to explore that a little bit further and see what his thoughts are on that because I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. That that at least that, you know, uh uh initial concept. I, and I and listen, I I want Trump to win, don't get me wrong, but but I also see how they rally a certain base that may not be in the way that it's being done, the healthiest thing for the country overall. Well, do you, do you want to know what I think is going to happen? This is what I think is going to happen between now and the election. I think that about three months, two to three months before the election, Biden's going to have a severe mental uh, medical issue. He's going to drop out. And I think immediately they're going to name Gavin Newsom as the, uh, yeah. as, and, and and then because it's new and it's fresh and it's where this guy come from for a lot of people. Cause I've talked to a lot of people. A lot of people don't even know who he is. They don't know. And, and, and he's going to win. And I think when that happens, it's going to be really, really, really bad. Really bad. Really, he's bad. ten times worse. Yeah, it's it's terrible because 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 unlike 
Biden, who is a puppet and doing what he's told to do, Newsom is an he's a legit communist who feels in control. Yeah, his ego he's not he's he's not going to be the puppet. Yeah, I saw him on a show and he was just going through about how great California is, and I'm like, bro, are, like, can you are, can you really say this with a straight face that California is so great? <laughs> was, like, was, and and you know what? There's some good people in California. Oh, for sure. And uh, there's some. Um, I was trying to, there was another story about California. That California business owners say the $20 minimum wage will cause them to raise prices and close businesses. Um, so, I mean, when they push that $20 minimum wage thing, Newsom did, uh, ineffectively, he's, he, he's, he's, he's effectively destroying California. Well, and, and they're now, they're now making it illegal. They're, they're going to start suing businesses that close down with the desire to move out of the state. I read that over the weekend. Yeah, of course they would. I mean, it's what? Man, I mean, you're going to sue you for going out of business? That's insane. Well, sue me. <laughs> That's insane. It's I'm stupid. Declare, I'll declare bankruptcy and move uh, anyway. Yeah. They got, they're putting taxes on people who are trying to leave the state. Yeah. Uh, it's just dumb. But. So to bring that back to my side of the world, this is what I keep telling people about Spotify. You know, there's this bill that's being talked about a bunch of bunch of people called the musicians fairness act or right. something like that. That's going to pay us one cent per stream. And everybody's like, we got to do that. We got to do that. We got to do that. And I'm like, whoa, 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 slow your roll because they're not going to lose money. So basically what they're going to do is they're, instead of it being 50 bucks for five years to upload a song, it's going to be five grand to upload a song. Hmm. And they're, yeah, you'll get your stream money, but they're going to get their money one way or the other. Or another, and all it's going it. to do is make it more expensive and harder to get, to get it up there. I'll never forget years ago, I was in Nashville. I was, I was kind of in a place in life where I didn't know where I was going. I was kind of in between careers and I just kind of on a whim went out and got an insurance license and I would buy these leads and I'd go sell people life insurance or Medicare or whatever. I've always been a hustler. I'm like, yeah, people buy this stuff. They want to buy it. I'll go sell it to them. So yeah. I was talking to this lady, and I want to say she was with BMI, and she was in charge of their jukeboxes nationwide back when they played records. And she, and she said, I don't know what she's – and she bought a life insurance policy. She goes, I don't know where I am. She said, BMI is going to fire me soon, so I'm going to lose my insurance policy here. Uh, and I said, why are they going to fire you? She said, because I'm, I'm obsolete. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, well, I'm over all the jukeboxes and the spins and the records that are in there, and we, you know, that I'm the person who counts all of that. She goes, we're, they're not going to have that anymore. I said, what do you mean? They're not going to have jukeboxes? She goes, they're not, there's not going to be jukeboxes anymore. Not yeah. like you're thinking of right. them. Now they're going to be digital songs. And I was like, wow, mm -hmm. what is this all about? And I can remember back then, that was a radical idea for me. I was like, Psh, that shit ain't going to happen. But yeah. here we are. Yeah. Here we are. And so, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, they're going to control you one way or another. Yeah. And, and basically what I do, you just have to look at stuff like Spotify and Apple music is just advertising and yeah. that's how you have to look at it, yeah. you know, and it sucks because songwriters aren't making what they used to make entertainers, you know, and everybody wants to, it's funny cause it, everything has a trickle down effect. You know, right. people want to bitch and moan and complain because artists are charging too much for tickets. I'm down with you on the fees. I'm down with you. Yeah. I think it's terrible that a venue, ticket master stuff like that. Dude, not even just ticket insane. master. It's all of them, like, but it's you, insane. Like like uh wherever outhouse tickets. Yep. You know, you you go on and you buy a twenty dollar ticket. By the time you get checked out, it's thirty five bucks. Yeah. Because of all the fees, and so I'm not down with that. But us artists are having to charge more to get in to see us play because we're not making the money from the records anymore. Yeah. And we. You know, just like everybody, you got to keep making your money. Then you have the venues that want to take 20% of your merch sales. Jesus I'm, Christ. I'm not going to venues that do yeah. that. Not I, well, that. I'll go. I just won't, I just won't sell merch. Won't I'll, sell put merch. A, I'll put a, a, I've done the same thing. A UPC code that says, hey, go to the merch store if you want to buy done your that. stuff. Yep. And then, um, you know, I have this kid who sent me a message on TikTok. And I don't always see the messages people send me on social media because I get a bunch of them. But, this kid sent me this big, long thing, dude. He goes, I know you don't know me, but I'm a songwriter. I'm young. I'm trying to do this, blah, blah, blah. Can I send you some of my stuff? And, you know, you hear that, and you're like, yeah, you can send it to me. You know, so he sends me a couple of clips, and he's like, hey, dude, I just want to say again, thank you so much for responding to me. I appreciate that. Is there any way I can drive to where you are and just play a couple of songs for you? <laughs> and I'm like, no. Yeah. Because, again, you're wasting your time. I mean, what do you think I'm going to do for you? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, don't have the, I don't have some kind of magic thing to share your stuff and then suddenly once upon a time I could yeah. once upon a time I could say hey go follow Jeff Canada on Facebook and you'd get 30,000 new right followers that day it's I've no, it, literally seen it happen yeah. you can't do that anymore it's not the same the whole game has changed now 
Yeah. Like the whole game has changed. If I was, if I, you know, five years ago, if I was putting out the amount of content that I was putting out, I would have millions of followers. Millions of dollars. Yeah, millions of followers and, 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 and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. I know for a fact because I'm putting out more content than ever before. Me too. And I have people who say, we just miss you in the truck with the dog in the back seat. Well, I can put that out, but you're not going to see it. Right. I literally, literally, my Instagram, my Instagram went to 505,000 followers. Now it's at five hundred four thousand because they're now negatively impacting my deal. Look at look at this graph right here. Yeah, just, I'm losing just, followers. Look too. at that. Look yeah. at that. I went from a thousand new followers a day for six months, yeah. or something close to that. For several Mine months, looks the same. And then boom, it's just gone. Yeah, I mean I don't have five hundred thousand, but I have they're just deleting 000. people. Yeah, deleting people. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's, it's you know it's a crazy world we live in because you. If you want to have any kind of traction at all, you got to play the social media game. You have to. You can't not. You, you, have, you can't not. You have to. I have to. people all the time who watch this show, and they'll say, you should just put your stuff on Rumble. I am. You haven't gone over to Rumble to search and see if the show is on there. Right. Um, it's on Rumble. Well, we don't like YouTube. Okay, well, I still have to put it on YouTube. Chad, you don't need to put your stuff on YouTube. You need. I, we have to. Yeah. We literally, we can't do this show without sponsors, and sponsors expect those numbers. Yeah. They want it everywhere. So. Yeah. So well, I mean, even Joe, even Joe Rogan, who went to Spotify for an obscene amount of money, is now back on all the all the platforms yeah. now because you can't you can't just survive on one platform anymore. Yeah, it's not how it works. Yeah. and it's 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 a crazy world, man. It's a crazy world, and you know, there's so much noise. A hundred thousand new songs a week being uploaded to Spotify. Congratulations on the success of of the new song. Thank uh, you. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, famous again. It's doing good. Yeah, I put it's it on my good. weekly playlist. Uh, so every week I have a, I have a playlist that every week I'll go to my release radar and my favorite songs I'll put on this playlist. I need all the non-Christian abortion lovers to, to share my song famous again about yeah, Jesus. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Just Jeff Canada. Yeah. Well, it, it, but here's the thing. So, so get back to that religious thing, right? I was yeah. saying earlier that I'm not a religious person, Sure. but I feel like I'm a good human. Yeah. You know, I say fuck a lot, but other than that, I'm, oh, I do too. I'm a pretty good dude. Uh, but Candace, she's like super ultra, you know, not ultra right wing, but she's like super conservative. But we have a great relationship, and yeah. what you know, and everybody's like, "Well, there's no God in it. How is that possible?" Well, it's possible because I'm an open person, and and I understand. You know, you can't equate everyone's religion to who they are as a person. You right. just can't, because I know tons of people that are Christians that are judgmental. Well, I know some super religious people that are pretty rough, right? And yeah. and I know people that don't believe in God at all that do a lot to help out yeah. society. So. You know, but like that song, you know, when I heard that song, I was like, you know, you're my buddy and it's a good song, but I, the state, you know, it's not normally something I would share. It's not your message. It's not my message. Yeah. Right. I'm not anti that yeah. by any stretch of the imagination, but most of the time, if, a, if more of a religious song comes on, I'll just, I'll skip it or not share it. Right. You know, um, again, it's not, it has nothing to do because I don't like, because I disagree with it or I disagree with you. It's just, it's just not my, it's not your message. It's not my it's bag. It's not your deal. It's not it's your not mission. It's not what you're pushing. Right. The, uh, but, and I get that. I get that. Um, I'm not going to be sharing too many guar songs, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's, and that's fair. Right. That's fair. Um, I too will not be sharing too many guar songs. Not, not too much, not too much, uh, death metal, uh, but like Pearl Jam, let's, you know, like Pearl Jam or Jason Isbell, you know, these, these guys that are, that are super, far left and pretty political, but I'm still a huge fan of their music, man. Sure. And so I just separate the art from the artist and live my life. Yeah. You know, if I hear a song that, or if Jason Isbell puts out a tweet that hurts my feelings, yeah, I just go on living my life. <laughs> I've said it over and over again about comedians. I don't agree politically at all with Jim Jeffries. Right. Uh, but he, he, even the stuff, even his jokes that I don't agree with, they still make me laugh. They're hilarious. He's so, funny. He's funny. And that, you know, but you could, you know, just if you take out the craziness of artists over the years, I mean, Van Gogh and go yeah. down a list, you know, I always equate when people start getting on, they start getting on that pedestal about like uh, Chris Stapleton came out in support of Black Lives Matter. I'm never going to listen to that guy. You know what I mean? Right. That kind of stuff. I mean, he's arguably one of the best vocals of our generation. Sure. But like, imagine if, if a scientist comes out with a theory and that theory becomes norm, theory of relativity or whatever. But let's say Einstein was a Me Too guy. Are we going to all of a sudden just start ignoring all his great stuff that he's given to society because he <laughs> raped some chicks? Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you can't, you got to separate the art from the artist. You have to, or you'll, you'll, or you won't like anything. You won't like anything. Nothing. 
and I've and I've tried to explain. Like I can see I can see conservatives online who who are devouring each other. Like people that I know personally on either side. I got a call from a guy who's pretty well known conservative influencer the other day. I was going down the highway, so I had some time. So he called me. We chatted for a minute, and he's just going on and on bitching about certain people that if I said their names, you'd know. And he's like, but again, he's got personal relationships with them, and they're devouring each other. And I'm like, yeah, that gets old. It's so old. I mean, it just really does get old. I don't expect, you know, Candace Owens and, and Ben Shapiro get in this big tiff, and they want to have a debate online. And I'm like, shut, just shut up. Here's how we fix it 30 years from now, if I'm if I'm in charge of the free world. <laughs> yeah. You eliminate speed speed bumps in school zones because yeah. that'll eliminate the the Dar- Darwinism. That'll eliminate the dumb ones <laughs> right out the gate. Um, so you do that, and then the next thing you do is you bring back bullies. Mm-hmm. You bring back bullies, you plant them, plant bullies, yeah, and and let let kids deal with some adversity at a much younger age. And I'm joking about the speed bumps in school zones things, but I'm going to give you a prime example. When I was a kid, there was a guy named James Orsack. And he was a couple years younger than me. Well, he was out riding his bike one day, him and a bunch of buddies, and they were going on a hill and he was riding in the oncoming traffic lane and the other kids were not. And he came over the hill and he got killed. Right. And that's a tragedy. You know, that's a huge tragedy. We, but guess what never happened again in Splendor, Texas or anywhere close to that. No more kids got killed by yeah. oncoming traffic. Sometimes yeah. it takes someone doing something dumb and dying to, to let everyone else realize that that's not very smart. Yeah. Look at NASCAR. After Dale Earnhardt died, they changed everything about the walls, the tracks, the yeah. neck harnesses, the you know the cars, the whole thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, again, you learn from you learn from you learn from tra- the tragedy, from the loss. You learn from it, right? And so we got to figure out a way to start giving our kids more adversity, so that way when they get into high school, they don't go shooting up the schools because they've never have been turned down, they've never yeah. been rejected. You know, we my son's thirteen years old, and we just left a a triple a baseball organization because they're more worried about the kids feelings than they're about winning baseball games. Yeah. And so we left and he's now playing on a 14 U he's playing up a year and he's killing it. But this, they won the championship yesterday and mm-hmm. it's like his team didn't, but the 13 you did, but the, it's a winning organization because they don't give a shit about your kids feelings or the parents feelings. If you're, if you're not playing good, you get down sent down to double a f- to, for development. That's, we got to get back to that. We got to get back to giving people adversity at a younger age. So that way, when they get out in the real world, they don't have anxiety. <laughs> Online bullying. Boop. My oldest Turn, kid. Push the button. My oldest kid told off. me that the other day. I have, I have severe social anxiety, and I just I, I thumped him right in the balls. I'm like, <laughs> Canada's don't have social anxiety, bro. <laughs> like, social anxiety is not real. I mean, I, it's real, but get, you know what I'm saying? I, I get it. We, like, well, we've created a thing. It, we've created a thing. You take away the adversity. There, there's, I mean, no pain, no gain. Yeah. There's weakness. And I like what you said. Let's plant some bullies. They know the limits. We're not out there bashing our heads into concrete. Right. But see, again, that. But see, that's that's the thing we're living in now. Now we're living in a more violent society where there's no value for human life. And a kid, you know, that the the girl, where was it in St. Louis or Baltimore, or wherever it was, mashed the kid's head into the concrete and basically put her in a coma. Uh, it's like okay. You didn't know the limit. We fought when we were on the playground, but I didn't have a fear that somebody was going to sh- stab me. Right. You know what I mean? But uh, you also wouldn't go to jail either. Right. And right. now they're arresting these kids because there's a fight. Sometimes kids just need to beat the shit out of each other. It's just, yeah. I mean, hell, sometimes adults need to beat the shit out of each other. The other day we were, uh, we were, where were we? We were in, uh, we were in some city. We played a show, uh, me, Steve, and Ben. And afterwards we went to a bar uh, and we were having a drink. We were just sitting there watching sports highlights and Ben gets up, you know how quiet Ben McPherson is, yeah. you know, fiddle player. He's so quiet. And so he goes to the bathroom and he comes back. Well, this guy walks over and taps Ben on the shoulder kind of hard and, and says something to him. And Ben's like, I could see Ben was just kind of denying something. And so the guy walks back. We were like, what was that about? And he goes, the guy asked me when I walked past them, they were at those like stand up bars and tables, you know, uh, these two couples. He goes. He asked me, "Did I smack his girlfriend on the ass when I walked by?" And Ben said, "I most definitely did not. Most definitely did not." I mean, Ben's the most unassuming guy, yeah. you know. And uh, I looked back over there, and the girl's ass was as wide as this table. Anyway, I was like, "Well, maybe you just bumped into her." And Ben goes, "I made zero contact." Yeah. And so, anyway, the guy is just sitting back, just eye 
you know, humping us the whole time looking. And then his lesbian looking buddy across the table is staring at us like they're like ready to go. And and finally, like I'm not a I'm not that a confrontational type of person in a public place. Like, but like that just kept pissing me off because it was Ben. And finally I was like, hey, if you want to do something, come over here and freaking do right. it. I nobody slapped your girl's ass, but we'll slap her fa- we'll slap your face. Yeah. You know what I mean? The guy just still I and finally he just left. He got out of there, took his girl and left. It so we but at least he said something. Yeah, it comes over give and him says, props for that. I mean, I was like, dude, okay, but it didn't happen, so let it go. Yeah, but now don't quit all the the escalation of the deal, because where I grew up, where I grew up, you make an accusation, you back it up, you hit somebody, you expect to get hit back. Yeah, you know, when we played baseball in high school, our our high school baseball coach, the greatest high school baseball coach Georgia ever produced, Gerald Barnes. Um, he uh, he used to make us run a mile every day, you know, before practice, after practice, we'd go hit a mile. We're like, why are we running a mile in baseball? And he said, because I want to see who's going to be there in the end. Yeah. In essence, we ne- he never had to cut anybody off the team. They cut themselves. Yeah. They don't do that with kids anymore. Well, they do on this one. Good. It's it's great, man. I, so our first day of practice um, for the tryout, we went out there and they have this kid and he's, he's carrying a concrete PVC pipes got concrete stuffed in it. He's carrying it over his head. They made him do it the whole practice. Wow! Because he had he flipped off the other team or no something kidding. at the tournament. Good for them. And so I was like, this is cool. And then this last week, they they had fourteen kids, and so they put three of them down to Triple A. And Brody's thirteen, the new kid, and they kept Brody on the team, and they put down a bunch of the fourteen year olds. And one of the dads is super mad about it. The other the other ones are like, no, he deserves to his attitude or whatever go down. Yeah, but. There are organizations out there that do it, but it's not the norm. I mean, select, if you want to know what's wrong with society, just go start paying attention to select baseball. I've said that for years. Just watch baseball. How that goes is how society goes. And, you know, uh, the invention of the timeout shit and all this stuff. And I'm not saying that, again, it's overcorrection. Yes, there were teachers beating kids and there was, a, you know, there was child abuse going on. But, but also back in those days, my parents knew my teachers. Like right. they knew them, they got to know them, and like I can remember my mother, my my mother saying to, you know, one of my my PE coaches. I remember my my dad saying to one of my PE coaches, saying, "Hey, if he needs discipline, give it to him." Yeah. But he knew him, right? They knew him. It wasn't some rando out there that's being pushed by his teachers' union, you know, who you know, God only knows, they're willing to, you know, let you change clothes and pretend to be a different gender these days and brainwash you and all this kind of stuff. I, and it's like the teachers didn't have those type of agendas back right. then. And I'm not saying all teachers today do, but there's you, you don't know who to trust. But the way I was raised, anyway. it was total community. Yeah. Like if you got busted doing something, the cops would pick you up and they would take you home. Yeah, you knew it was going to be worse. And then you knew. And, and I remember one time I was at a grocery store and I told my mom – to shut up or no, oh. <laughs> it was either no or to shut up. Some and and I got and I felt this burning sensation across my ear, <laughs> and I look back and I look up and it was just some random lady in the grocery. Oh, come on, really? She popped the shit out of me. I love and it. She goes, "You need to like respect your mom. It's yeah. yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, or something like that." My, my uh, this is a notorious story around my family. My father, God rest him, uh, my father had a quick temper. I have a quick temper. I have to be careful because my father comes out of me, <laughs> and I have to work. I've had to work for 50 years to not let that happen because it's just it's a generational thing, and I don't like it. But my father had a quick temper. And so uh, my one of my brothers who was adopted, he, my parents adopted him when he was 15 years old. He'd grown up in juvie homes. His mother abandoned him. He was a bad kid. Uh, my parents got a hold of him, saved his life. But when he moved in, he smarted off one night to my mother, and my dad put his head through the wall. I mean, it, thank God his head didn't hit the studs in the wall. It went right through the sheetrock and then left a hole in the wall for four years to remind him of basically this is what happens when yeah. you smart off like that. Like these days, they say, "Oh, that's abuse." Good. <laughs> I mean, what you, whatever label. I'll tell you what. You know, this whole. You know, I've got the song "Beat Their Ass" that I do. It's mm-hmm. a joke song, "Beat That Ass." And so people are like, "Oh, child abuse," and I'm like, you know, but they weren't. They weren't threatened to wear dresses. <laughs> like yeah. back then, when you had a little discipline, they they kind of knew who they were. They didn't have these identity issues and confusion. But are you doing? Are you doing it to teach them a lesson? Are you doing it? 
out of anger right. and, and out of huge difference and out of malice. Yeah. Right. And like same thing happened to me, my 13 year old kid. So he's in some trouble right now because he cheated on his girlfriend with another 13 year old girl. She came over his, over the house. Does he know how to play guitar? Uh, he does not, but he's, <laughs> but, he's a little, but he's a little football and baseball stuff. Okay, I was so. gonna say if he's got these kind of habits already, keep him away from the guitar. Well, it, he did some stuff that you know that a thirteen year old should not be doing at this point. Sure. And uh, and and then but after getting busted, he just lied and lied and dug his hole deeper and deeper. And and I went up and, and you know me and his mom have a great relationship. And uh, we went over, had a talk with him, and I, and he just kept lying. And it was like eight or nine lies deep that we were busting him in. And I just basically I grabbed him by his shirt, and I said. You became a man last month with this little stunt you pulled. And so I'm just going to let you know, you tell me one more lie, I'm going to shove your head to the sheetrock. And his mom did not. She's pretty liberal, but she backed me up on it. And uh, again, I, I wouldn't have done it, but I need him to know that I would do it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But again, is that me abusing my child or is that me teaching him a much a very valuable lesson that you don't lie? Like liars and thieves, man, nobody likes them. Right. They don't get far in life. No, they don't get far. And I, and I don't want him to be that. I don't want to hurt my kid. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to. But you'd rather someone that loves them to, to cause them some some pain right. and consequence versus what society is going to give them. Yeah. The, the world, we live in a very, very hard world. The earth is just hard. If you Even if you take away all the technology and just the primal, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to live. Everything in this world was created to kill you until we developed, you know, our, our ability to shape iron in a way to protect ourselves. Right. You know what I mean? And it's just, but even then it was still hard. Yeah. I mean, just think about, think about in the 1870s, 1880s, if you got, if you got snake bit, mm -hmm. you're probably gonna die. That's it. <laughs> probably. So, I mean, and, and even now it's hard, you know, with all the adversity that, that the younger generation has to deal with. It's just a hard life. And so we have to figure out a way to give our kids the tools to deal with a hard life. And there's the same thing with being racist. I can say something about a black kid getting shot by a cop. That doesn't make me racist. Right. I can beat the crap out of my kid to teach him a lesson. That doesn't make me a child abuser. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And we, and that's what's the intent? Yeah. What's the intent behind it? And that's what everything, cancel culture, everything. What's the intent? You know, well, I mean, we got to ask that woman that performed fellatio on that great day. Dude. What's the intent, lady? Yeah. What the hell's going on? What is going on in that household? Wow. That's messed up. All right. In 30 years, Jeff Canada is going to be running the free society. I'll be dead in 30 years, bro. <laughs> I'm 45 in 30 years. That'll make me 70. You probably make it okay. 75? Yeah. I don't know. You're I don't probably, man. You're, yeah, you make I it. I figure I'm going to cash out around 68. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. That's I what know. I think. It's weird to think about. Life, there's only one life, man. I don't think about it much. Yeah. Do you think about mortality? Uh, at times. At times I do. Uh, just simply because um, I had another friend, just lost another friend to cancer. This, this is two in two weeks. Um, and way too young. Yeah. Way too young. And way too fast, you know. And you just, life comes at you. Death comes at you. It's, it's something you got to deal with. And we all deal with it. We're all going to face it. So yeah, think about it. And I think more of it for me is what type of legacy you're leaving behind. See, I don't think about any of that shit. I do. Well, I mean, with four kids, <laughs> with four kids, I'm like, okay, you're leaving, you know, again, the Bible says a righteous man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. That's not necessarily money. That's, you know, to me, that's reputation. That's a name. That's, yeah. you know, what are you leaving behind? And, um, so I think about I think about things like that, you know. Yeah, um, I'm just joking. You know, in 2018, my mom got well, my mom died from cancer. Um, you know, I, I was 40, and uh, she was 63. And and the way the way the way it entered my mind was, okay, I have 23 years left on this earth. That's and so I and I was like, I'm just gonna start chasing smiles, man. I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna start yeah. doing whatever makes me happy. And uh, because at the end of the day, all you have is yourself. And um, and you know, I don't, I don't want to be sixty three and lying on my deathbed and look back and be like, man, I should have did this, I should have did this, I should have done that. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't want that. But I don't really think too much about what I'm going to leave behind. Fuck them, they'll be fine. My kids, they'll be fine. They'll be okay. They'll be all right. They'll figure it out. We're going to be broke musicians anyway. Not, <laughs> yeah. What'll probably happen is my kid will. My, my what'll probably happen, knowing my luck, is my kid will get drafted by either the NFL or the Major League Baseball, and like two days later, I'll die in a car crash. See, that's what I keep thinking. I'm like, we're gonna win that big billion dollar lottery, and then I'm gonna have a heart attack, and I'll be like, see, I was finally rich and didn't make it. Yeah. Finally, finally could have played some of these anyway. Yeah. Jeff Canada, you're on. You're on Instagram at 
Jeff, Jeff Canada, Canada Music. Music. JeffCanadaSucks.com. That's the website. Jeff's can Jeff Canada Sucks.com is the website. And uh you were setting up one time, your band was was loading at a music festival, and I was backstage and I was driving by and I just yelled out, Jeff Canada sucks. It's the best. And you're like, I love you. It's the best, man. Yeah. Uh, I was playing a show with Aaron Watson and uh he was like Dude, you know somebody out there in the crowd's wearing a Jeff Canada suck shirt? And I was like, Yeah, I sold it to him. Yeah. He's like, You're crazy. I'm out. It's it works. It's and it's good. It's great marketing. Dude, not only that, man, in the Texas country world, there are so many <laughs> people that are just taking themselves way too seriously. Yeah. Chill out, man. Have what some it, fun. What is it Cody Hibbard's got on the shirt? The ho re shit. Yeah. Ho re shit. Ho re shit. He he's a Chinese country singer. He's not Chinese. Whatever he That's is. That's racist. Is it? <laughs> He's something. I think he's Korean. Korean? I think so. He looks Chinese. Is that, is that how it works? Now that you say Korean, I could see that. Yeah. I think he's Korean. Shy, you're Singaporean, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's Korean. Is that how you say it? Singaporean? Is that how you say it? Yeah. That's way cool. That's, he's from that, Singapore. Yeah, but Singaporean, that's a cool, that, yeah. that's got a cool ring to it. I, my producers, I've had every ethnicity there is yeah. over the years. Well, I always, my thing is, are, are you from Canada? <laughs> and I'm always, and my response always is, "What's your last name?" <laughs> Daniels. Are you from Daniels? <laughs> like, like, dude, I'm not kidding. I had a world geography teacher yeah. in high school mispronounce my last name multiple Come times. Come on, multiple times. Come on, not even making that shit up. And finally, on the last one, I was like, "You, your job literally is to look at a map. Like, you literally look at a map for it." Wow. Later. What's that country above us called? Wow. Why would you say my name is Kanata? <laughs> <laughs> trying to rub a little church on it. I get it. Yeah, trying to put, trying yeah, to put some, a little, some little, of that French, little Dierte. Little Dierte. Some of that Joe Dierte. <laughs> trying to put some of that French Canadian on there. I'm from Kanata. Yeah, it's a crazy last name, uh, but it's my last name. I think it's a great last name. Yeah, it's it's it. That's it's, I, think, I think, especially for the stage, I think it's a great, it rings, it rolls off the tongue. Um, Jeff Canada Music. And then uh, jeffcanadasucks.com. Follow him, check him out. If you get a chance, go see him at a show. Come on. Uh, you'll have a good time. I, I wanted to get over. You were playing at Shanahan Saturday night. Mm. And uh, I wanted to get over there, but I got home and CJ had plans. Yeah, so, my, my goal is by the end of this year, by the end of 2024, that, to eliminate all of those type shows. Yeah. I'm going to be in ticketed events only in 2025. Yeah. That's the goal. Because I just I can't keep playing these three-hour cover shows. It's hard. It's hard. You know, they we were talking about uh, – we were talking about biscuits. You hadn't had any attention in a while. Uh, we were talking Chris Wallen. We were talking about in Nashville how these these guys go out and play Broadway. Now they have a class you have to take. You know, you know, you hear Jason Aldean talk about you know you play on Broadway for tips, and that's not true. You're not just playing for tips. So you do get hired to play on Broadway. But it's not much money, but though, it's but not yeah. much money, and they still pass the pickle jar around, and yeah. it's it's kind of a racket. But now they you have to do. You go to a class. You have to pay them to take a class mm. on how to perform on Broadway. Mm. And then you're going to go out there. There's a 1030 set. There's a 230 set. There's a 7 o'clock set, or I guess that's right, a uh, 630 set. And then there's a 1030 set. So it's, it's you know, four-hour sets that yeah. you're doing all this stuff. And that's a surefire way to kill yourself. Yeah, I got buddies that play three shows a day out there. Yeah. I mean, you're singing all day long over the noise over the crap, you're destroying your voice. Well, and most of those bands have a female and a male singer. Yeah, most of them swap on out. Broadway. But it's and they brutal, swap out. But it is, but I also don't really have much um you know, I again I've played well over five thousand shows in my career. Yeah. Okay, because I've been doing this since two thousand six full time. I don't know how many I played before that. I was still playing a lot before that, but I didn't start, I didn't leave my job until two thousand six. And man, the majority of those shows from 2006 to 2020 were four hour cover shows in front of a full band. Yeah. Where I'm the only singer. Yeah. And so I was able to do it for a long, long time. And it's not my voice that's the problem that I got to eliminate those shows. It's it's the fact that, you know, who's going to pay 25 bucks to come see me play at Dosey Doe and then go to the Goose's Acre and catch a set for free. Right. And that's what I got to eliminate. That's what you have to eliminate. I told, as an example, I, I told Cooper Wade years ago because Cooper Wade and I would go out and do these shows together. And, you know, Cooper, he, he's a honky-tonk band guy. He wants to play all night long. It's a party, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, no. The show has a beginning. The show has an end. We're going to go 90 minutes, mm -hmm. and it has an end. And so every time he, he was in the he was in this thing, he loves to bust my balls. We'd be on stage. We'd be finishing. And he's like, oh, man, you're quitting already? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes, I am. Because I want those people to come back the next time. 
if I if I pour everything out here and it, I'm, they're exhausted with me, the next time they're just going to be like, uh, uh-uh, leave them wanting more. There's a difference to that. There are those who are hired to play, you know, be the background entertainment. Come here, biscuit. Yeah, I did it Quit for chewing years. Chewing that up. It's so uh, chewing on the bottle down there. And I was like, uh, there, that's a role. That's a role. But like you said, where you're going as a business, that's not the way to do it. So yeah, yeah. you can't you can't you can't build yourself as an original artist and a name if you're out playing a ton of other people's music. And I'll, I'll always do covers because because sure. if I do a badass cover of something, then the, that crowd's way more likely to pay attention to my next song. Yeah. So I always do covers, but I just I got to get out of the. Uh, three four five hundred dollar three hour solo acoustic yeah. shows hire you know. jeff canada yeah he'll come, please he'll, he'll, he'll bring him to your venue house yeah. concerts listen and not only that you're doing the house concert thing let's talk about that for a second but uh the, the venues out there i know there's a number of venue owners out there who watch this show uh bring jeff canada in get him in there promote him and listen promote do at least 50 percent of the promoting <laughs> damn it because because you leave it for the artist to do all good luck come here biscuit i'm gonna kill you the uh you making noise? Why are you always making noise? Look at these eyes. It's like it's like um, she looks like uh, donkey on uh, see, Shrek. That, whenever she gives you that little sad. See, look. See, that's you know? what I want my crowd to look like. <laughs> to look up. At I want you. my crowd to be up at the stage, just wanting me <laughs> just so give bad. Me more, give it more. But no, we don't. We don't get that anymore. No, it don't happen. Uh, but you talked about doing the house shows, um, which a lot of artists are doing that with the venues closing down and stuff like that. Yeah. Just going to somebody's house. Well, what I, so I just did an offer for anybody that hits me up. I'll do a house concert for 500 bucks. Yeah. And, but I'm having to educate them when they contact me. There's a huge difference between a private party and a house concert. Mm -hmm. A private party is three hours long. You have all your friends over. Y'all don't give a shit what I'm doing. I'm just over there playing back. You're in the corner. That's $1,500. I will not play one for less than 1,500 bucks. That's Mm -hmm. the price. If you want me, I'll come do it and you'll have a great time and I'll do all the sing alongs and we'll have a great time. But a house concert is a 90-minute set where you set up chairs and you set up it where it's like a listening environment. And so if that's what – and you can sell tickets, you can do whatever you want to do, and and I'll do that for 500 bucks. But so I'm having to educate some folks on that because I've had a lot of people reach out, well, I'm I'm having a 50th birthday party and this and that and this and that. I'm like, I'm I'm not – it's not a private party. Not what that is, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. private party is three times that. Yeah, Brandon Ryder's been going in and cooking barbecue for people and and then playing the music. Dude, that guy's so cool. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of his, but he just now followed me back on he's all good the dude. socials. I've never met him, but I definitely want to. Yeah, he's a good guy. And uh, There's so many cool dudes out there, man. Yeah. I played with a guy named uh, Jeff Crosby the other day from mm-hmm. Idaho, and he was such a cool dude, man. Really, there's only been a few that... There's a couple of dicks. That weren't cool. There's a couple of dicks, but they're few and far between. Yeah. You know, there's a few guys that they just can't help themselves. The ones I can't stand are the ones that are like on my level or lower that act like that shit. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, Daniel Andrews. Ah, <laughs> uh, let me send that clip to him. Uh, no, you can send it to him. I, I, I did a, I, I talked about it on the podcast. How he knows how I felt about that night. I That's mean, funny. you know, you're sitting on the. It's it just, it's, it's just not smart. Yeah. That's the problem. You, you know, when you're on our level, lower, maybe a little bit bigger. Every handshake matters. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them. You never know which hand you're going to shake that's going to turn into something rad. And if you're secluding yourself by hanging out on your bus or hanging out in the trailer or in right. the green room and you're not out with the people, you're 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 eliminating handshakes. True. It's true. And so, you know, I, I keep getting hit up by all these artists. Hey, can, can you help me out with getting some sponsors? And I'm like, no. Well, well why? how did you get them? Well, I got them because I'm cool to people. Yeah. And I built friendships and relationships with people. And then those people became successful. And then they want, they want to see me be successful. And yeah. so they're giving, yeah. you know what I mean? It's not, I'm not going out and begging for sponsors. All these sponsors have come to me. Right. You and know, and those are the good relationships. Yeah. All right. We got to go at Jeff Canada music. Oh, bam. Jeff Canada sucks.com. Check him out. Go to a show, have him in all the good stuff. Anybody want biscuit? She's up for adoption. She'll be in the front yard later on. Uh, <laughs> later on, no, she's pretty good. She's an all right dog. She just loves people. Anyway, Jeff, thanks for coming on, buddy. Yeah, man. And, thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, man. All right, guys, find me on the road. Watchchad.com for all the fun stuff is. I'm actually going on a cruise. Uh, we're doing a music cruise uh, the last week of April. So we gotta we gotta tape some shows. I don't really want to. I don't want to leave people hanging. I want to keep on with the shows. So we gotta put some in the can. I'll I'll stand in for you. You come on in, yeah, yeah. and uh, bring it on in. Bring it on in. We'll put them out.
That was one thing about being at the Blaze. They would never let you have a guest host. Like Glenn Beck has a guest host. All these other shows, they, do. they were like, no, Chad, your sponsors want you reading their ads. And I was like, son of a, why can't I get a, can't, you just, you just, can't get a guest host? You just haven't hit your stride yet. Ever, ever. I'm never, I don't think I'm ever hitting that stride. All right, guys, uh, check it out. Watchchad.com. Praythertees.com is where the merchandise is. You can also find that at watchchad.com. Go to where podcasts are offered. Leave us a rating and a review. Five stars is what we deserve. And then a review. Say whatever you want to say. Tell us how glorious Jeff Canada's beard is and uh, all that good stuff. All right, we're going to get out of here. We love you. God bless you. We will see you next time. Bye.